Okay, so we are back. Uh, Koyoku is arriving, so we can. I can just start by saying that to the people that are watching the live stream, in that uh, it is possible for them to intervene uh, to the jury by tweeting using the hashtag uh, Visible Award. So if there are any questions that you want to ask, or any, uh, or maybe one of the artists that feel that something is missing. Uh, in, in this can tweet or somebody working in the project can tweet and, and tell us something and we're gonna read it and it will appear on our screen so we'll be in touch with them live so uh, we started the session the the core session so the jury session with a short summary uh, by Charles Escher the chairman of the jury uh, that will also kick off the debate and yeah we, and another element that we have in this, uh, in this uh, short uh, uh, summary of the project is, as I said before, these uh, quotes from texts that we commissioned to the curators that nominated the projects, or in the case of the projects from the open call, uh, texts that have been commissioned to people that know about the project and have been asked by the artists uh, to, to write about the project. And in the few quotes you're going to see here, uh, we tried uh, uh, to uh, highlight certain aspects that weren't made uh, available in the previous material. So either on the text or on the, through the video statement that we've seen in the morning. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Matteo. And um, uh, thanks to everybody that's here. We're slow everyone's slowly filtering in, which is good. Um, you can come to the front if you want, rather than sneak around the back. <laughs> um, I was, uh, I was in intending really not to do a, a preview of the projects, because I hope all of you have got a, a fairly good idea and to sort of try and do a very short uh, uh, pricey of each of the projects would do them no justice at all. I think it's uh, important that we consider the specifics of some of the locations and there are certainly people here in the audience who've got knowledge of some of the, the places where these things are happening. Um, and I think can, uh, we would like to take advantage of that knowledge and to hear some of those uh, accounts, maybe people who have actually experienced some of the projects in reality. Um, one thing that we were talking about as a jury is that we um, are obviously, uh, given the nature of the, the smallness of the art world, we're obviously uh, in contact with some of these artists and we have, I think, all in our different ways, worked with them or worked in parallel with them or been in exhibitions with them or curated them or written about them. Um, not all of them, but many. So clearly there's not uh, any notion of a, um, of an, uh, of a uh, we're not naive people coming to this set of 10 projects as though they have fallen out of the blue um, for us to assess in a, in a sort of juridical sense, yeah? to, be, to be judges in, the, in that sense of making an, uh, 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 an unbiased opinion, an objective opinion to whatever extent it is. Um, so what I would say is, is I would encourage the jury and also people that are in the public to um, talk about their experiences of these projects or their experiences of the artists and not to hide in any sense the fact that there is knowledge which is not necessarily shared by everybody but can become shared by everybody if we speak to uh, if we speak about it i think it's important that we recognize that that that, that uh, those those knowledges and even those friendships exist but clearly one of the reasons of organizing this and doing it in, in, in public uh, is precisely that, that those, those, those interests can be examined and can be seen for what they are and can be taken into account in the decision of the jury. So I hope that that's okay for all of us, that we can, uh, that we can relax about that, that to some extent. Um, so what I'd like to start off with is, is uh, looking at the jury members, and I do hope Koyo comes at some point, because uh, otherwise she'll miss the whole point of being here. Um, that, uh, I don't know whether somebody can go and try and find her, or um, is it worthwhile? Because otherwise it will be silly. Um, what I would uh, like to do is to look at the question of the criteria that we might use to judge these projects overall, and then to talk about each of the projects in turn. 
Um, and I, so I would like to divide this session into two, essentially. Um, firstly, where we try and determine the criteria, and what I will try and do is, is, is organize and write those criteria down and revisit them so that we might have six or seven words or, 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 or phrases, which ultimately are the ones that we can use when we talk about the individual projects. So are they X, are they Y, and to what degree are they this or that? I think that becomes quite a, a useful discussion about how this, in general, how this question of socially engaged or arte util or uh, the question of practices which go beyond the, the limits of the, um, of the existing art condition, the existing art world, um, how those uh, can be judged. You know, there's, a, there's an element in which all of these projects are extremely good. They all are extremely honest, I think. Uh, there's very little cynicism. They have an integrity to them as projects. Um, so clearly any judgment that's made of that is, is, is a judgment that's made with regard to that integrity and, that, and that, uh, that sense of wanting to achieve a better world, wanting to achieve a better condition is, is an already given. Yeah? Now that in the general art world, of course, you would say that's probably not true. But I think within these projects, it's true that there's a, there's a, a genuine uh, and, and an honest attempt on the part of the artist and the part of the, uh, of the projects to improve things in the world. And that's certainly something that, that we, not, not necessarily that we take for granted, um, but it's something that we need to um, both take account of and to some extent forget about. Yeah? So we're not making a judgment necessarily about, only about the ethics of the project. Yeah? There's a question of aesthetics and there's a question of uh, effectiveness, uh, in a sense, uh, activism. Thank you for joining us, Koi. It's very <laughs> sweet to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I was just trying to introduce the idea of criteria, and that was what I was talking about. So I think that this criteria needs, needs to formulate around the question of ethics, around the question of aesthetics. What does that mean in these contexts? How do we understand it? Uh, formal qualities, if you like. Are there formal qualities in, in, in forms of relation? which we can understand rather than the formal qualities that we've received from the October School and Clement Greenberg and that notion of modernity. Um, and, and also, are there activist qualities? In other words, are there actually affecting uh, um, uh, uh, results, outcomes of these projects, which also we can make judgments about? Like, are there more effective and less effective interventions? And how can we relativize the question of outcome? So I think this outcome, the ethics and the aesthetics, I wouldn't say they're criteria at all, because I think we need criteria within them. But those would be, for me, the, the, some of the discussion points that we'd need to touch upon in each of these projects. Now, I'd actually like to ask Nikos, because I was talking to him a little bit earlier, um, to outline maybe what these uh, more specific criteria can be within this, uh, this discussion. And maybe we can start to develop a vocabulary, which we can then measure these projects against. Nikos, could you start? Sure. It's a pleasure, Charles, and thank you. Um, is this working? Yes, it is now. First of all, let me just reinstate and underline the core points, which is that I think we all agree that all the projects share a common ethic, which is this ethic to be open to the world, to be socially engaged with is issues of importance, to have a deep commitment to human needs, and, and to pursue justice and equality in some form. There's also, um, so that, that, that sort of ethical approach is evident across all the works, I think. Then there is another question which is more vertical if the first one is horizontal, which is the political engagement. And again, there seems to be a strong sense of political engagement in, in all the works, but it's very hard to try and measure the depth of that vertical impact even as much as we're starting to get a sense of the, each of the works, it's very difficult to really fathom the depth of that kind of impact that a work like this might have. However, what is apparent in almost all the works, and is very clear, is that each of the works tries to create another possible world, and it creates a sensory awareness of possibilities through art, and through the activation of an artist-led project into a social context. So that sensory awareness of another world is something that we can, in some ways, begin to grasp. So that's one of the criteria that I would um, put forward. 
The second criteria that I would also like to consider is that, sure, this work that we're now seeing is occurring in almost every part of the world. So it's not a passing phenomenon, it's not a unique thing to one particular metropolis, it's not a, an expression of a particular gang of people or a little movement that's come out of a specific cultural, historical, political moment. This is something that is truly global. Given that it is global, it's not a question of is it art anymore, that is the question of if, but rather a question of what kind of art and how is it becoming art. Now, in that sense, once we recognise that this, has, this phenomenon is here to stay and growing, it's also important to introduce this other criteria of translation now. And by this I mean is, if it is growing, how can it be extended beyond itself? If this is a project that happens in one place, in what way is it also extendable, translatable to another context? And by that I don't mean it can be or should be repeated as a model, but rather adopted as a modality. So that's an important distinction I would like to stress in terms of this criterion and this category of translation. And following on from this idea that we live in a common world and that we are increasingly in contact with people from other parts of the world, and many of the projects talked about this as an issue, there's another concept that I'd also like to put forward as central to our thinking, which is to do with our sense of interest in other people. How do these projects cultivate a sense of interest in other people? And this could be an aesthetic interest in other people, but an aesthetic interest is not a detached, as disinterested form, as Kant, the philosopher, put it, but I would say as a mode of friendship. Now, friendship is central in all ways, and has always been central for the production of art. Artists will tell you about the benefits they have from being friends with certain people. Other artists, the famous example of Picasso and Braque, other writers, Gertrude Strine, etc., other, other people who have supported them materially, symbolically, culturally, etc. So friends have always been a crucial part of art. But it's also been, I would say, a critical component in the discourse and understanding of what could be art. Because it's through friendship that you not only get support, but it's through friendship that you develop a sense of what is also possible. Therefore, a true friendship is one that extends your sense of identity. It takes you beyond where you are into new frontiers. And what I'm interested in is, is not friendship amongst people who've grown up together, but the possibilities that these projects create about friendship that emerges in the spontaneous, ephemeral, flighting moments of everyday life in a world of heightened mobility. In other words, friendship may not presuppose a long prehistory, and the question we might, win, might want to bring today about friendship isn't how long do you need to know someone before you say you are friends, but rather how little does one need in order to be interested in being friendly with someone else, in becoming interested in the other person, in adopting a worldview that's complementary with that of another person, in developing an empathic engagement with another world, and in, in other words, sharing in the commitment of creating another world through friendship. So these kinds of criteria, and then I think the other one we've also discussed, is the idea of if this kind of project was to proceed, and it was to be extended beyond its own context, and it was to invite others into its space, what would it also need and what resources does it already have in order to be viable, to be sustainable, to be applicable, to be transferable to the rest of us? And so it seems to me it's a critical moment in history for us to stop thinking, is this art now? Because I think 
by sheer volume. We cannot dispute the fact that it's here and it's growing. But the question now is, how do we talk about it? How do we qualify it? How do we clarify it? And how do we therefore extend its visibility, and there's the key word, its visibility in our everyday life and incorporate it into our practices and thereby transform our sense of what we think the world is and what it can be. Thanks a lot, Nikos. Maybe I can, I mean, what we have there is, is translation, the question of friendship, uh, uh, friendability, perhaps, and, um, and, and the question of sustainability. Um, if I can maybe come back to translation while some of the others either think of new criteria or respond to it. Um, I suppose one of the obvious questions is, is what you're asking for is, a, is a, a, if, if we use the, the, the not, not to put the point it so, so uh, directly, if we use this as a criteria, the fact that something is translatable would mean that it would, have a, would, it would be a positive uh, aspect of the project. To what extent do we then lose the connection with the very specific local situation in which the project is grounded? My, my question would be how do we measure the fact that so if something is so specific that, it, that if something works extremely well, and this question of what works, I leave open for a moment, but if something works extremely well, which we kind of know what we mean because it has a certain momentum and it has a certain sustainability and these things, but yet it wouldn't be translatable because it is, it's, 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 it's specific address to the community is, 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 is exclusive. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense to do it somewhere else. Would we then mark it down? Would we judge it to be less interesting? I doubt it, because um, I suspect that maybe the content is not transferable, but the form is. And I have a sort of enduring belief um, that when something is so specific, if you keep going, 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 going down to its specificity, you end up discovering its universality as well. And this is um, an old quote that various people from Walter Benjamin to Goethe have used about the relationship between the particular and the general. But um, I suspect that as we look at the specificity of things more and more deeply, we, of course we, dis we discover its unique manifestations, but we also perhaps find some contours that are um, applicable elsewhere as well, if not in exactly the same configuration. And the point is not to look for models which of course are not transferable, because when they are, they become a form of violence. But we look at modalities, which are a constantly shifting relationship between the form and the content. Would you yeah, just, yeah, just I, I sorry. To, yeah. Sorry, I want to, I, I agree with almost everything, not everything, but almost everything. And one point I want to make when you, you talk about form, I got a little nervous, because I think we have in the art world a tendency to make everything a formal operation even when the desire of the artist or the genuine uh, uh, aim of the project is not about that, uh, the way it is interpreted after a few degrees of degradation is through the form, and the way it is being reproduced mainly is through the form. And I don't know, I want to make a proposal in terms um, of language, instead of saying form, we can say method working methodologies. Yes, that's much better, thank okay. you. Let's try and stick to that rather than, I mean, again, it's about this vocabulary. You know, you see in Ate Util, we have a lexicon, which is really an attempt because we have this imposition of, you know, we're speaking the American language, let's be honest, it's not the, uh, and, and, and we're also using terms which are derived from that Clement Greenbaum October school. So essentially, we're trapped within a language which we want to get out of because they would deny that any of this was art. You know, even this whole museum would be, would not, would not be included in their thinking. So, so that, 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 organization of, of knowledge through the through their language does restrict us so form becomes such a loaded term that that even if we need it and mean it in another way it's kind of hopeless to try and use it because it's already captured and and liberating it is going to be a bigger task even than 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 than, than is big enough for us um, Koyo please um, I don't know I think I missed uh a little bit of the, your introduction, but uh, I was thinking uh, uh, that uh, one of the criteria that will be important for me to see us using in the 
judging or in the selection of uh, or, or in the assessment of all these projects will be um, the effects or the impacts because I consider and this only engages me, I consider that socially engaged art uh, is not necessarily better or less uh, interesting, but it enters a territory that, in my opinion, uh, calls for certain results, which the rest of the contemporary art doesn't or modern art doesn't and so on so and uh, and i think that that is for me the the major uh, difference between uh, art engaged politically engaged or socially engaged art than general art per se so uh, i will be interested in seeing in seeing that we discuss the project also on the basis of the effects, on the basis of do we, uh, my, my, uh, my concern is we, we cannot, if artists engage in certain issues, become the new social scientist, then they also have to bear the responsibilities of a social scientist or a sociologist or and so on and uh, and uh, a second criteria which i think we should uh, 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 look at is a certain form of aesthetics we were talking forms we were talking methodologies but i really believe that um, <coughs> regardless of any sort of political engagement and the activism that an artist can put uh, at play in a project, an artist is still an artist. And I, I still want to see the, the kind of art or the, it, it can be something absolutely minimal, not even perceptible, but there is a certain aesthetics that I mean, I give you an example. It's very simple. The last Berlin Biennial is a bad example of social, social, uh, social engaged art, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, there were many works there. That, I mean, projects. I couldn't call them works, but many projects there that were claiming exactly this idea of uh, producing art for social justice and so on. And in the short list here, there are there are many projects that for me, are uh, plainly into the activism uh, 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 realm, which uh, I don't see, I don't see the art in it. Now, Nikos will say, we don't need to see the art anymore, no. but, after, after, but after seeing uh, Tanya's project, which is for me a wonderful example of socially engaged art with aesthetics, you know, which uh, I really think that it's uh, it's uh, it's inter it's important. I would I would want you to, to look at it through that. Can I, I feel like I'm the noting uh, in the theater. They have a note person who tell you <laughs> the same. As, but sorry, I'm not. I I'm very responding that generating. So so no. But I think this is. I agree with you. And this is the tension that we always have, and we always been criticized. But in the Arte Util show, we created a word called ice ethics. So it's aesthetics and ethics as a one word. And it was kind of this claim where you're saying that there is an actual aesthetic in the fact that you're proposing a different ethical model, or you are proposing a, diff uh, a kind of process of generating a different collaboration methodology with people. Um, but also, um, I really like this social scientist as artist. I think I'm going to use it in the future if you let me. Uh, me. But uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> But I think this is always, um, I agree with you, there is a different aesthetic. It's not the activist only, but it's not the, also the art art only. And I feel it's in this kind of thing that we call the practical utopias, where you can still realize something for real, but you're still dreaming at the same time you're doing it. Because it's giving you this dimension of something impossible. 
I think this is, for me, as an artist, what I see this aesthetic moment, where some of these projects have some less, some more, where you are witnessing not only a, a specific experience, but you also experience the impossibility that is possible. You know, this kind of, uh, kind of weird moment Then you are a believer, in a way, like Jana used to say, you know. And a different believer, not religious, Jesus Christ believer, but... Um, but yeah, and I think this is the problematic of creating this uh, kind of fake globalization of these kind of projects in which they become something extremely simplistic for the happiness of the person maybe in Facebook. Not really for the people, I mean, not all of them are like this, but I saw one project that I was kind of, it looks more like a TED talk um, aesthetic than, than actually, you know, mm -hmm. And so. also, if to just to go, you said something about globalization, and I, I heard uh, sustainability. Mm -hmm. And going back into the social science uh, practice, into into artistic practice, I I, I really uh, I really uh, think that uh, um, it is uh, it is important that sustainability that Nikos uh, mentioned is also. Oh, it's okay. I'm sorry. It's also it's just water. It's uh, it's also it's also a criteria. <laughs> it's also a criteria because uh, I hate to see. I mean, there is this uh, 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 hope on and hope off, you know, uh, attitude in terms of uh, okay, today I'm going to get into I don't know. Uh, uh, deforestation, this and this and that, and then next year I'm doing this and that. So I think that there is also a, 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 um, a kind of a level of uh, longevity, uh, not necessarily in the project itself, but in the form or in the engagement, in the issue, and in the issue that you you engage with. So uh, I think that that would I mean maybe yeah. maybe. Two points to draw. One, one, um, and we've had this discussion before. I would be very wary of using the word utopia in any context here. So I think that, and I think maybe we can discuss that because for me, it, it's a, it's a, a, a word that's absolutely irresponsible because it, it has no connection to the condition, and you can't have practical utopias. That that simply doesn't doesn't no. And, uh, um, and uh, we could talk about, but I, I would really avoid that term because I think it, it, it it's it's a dangerous term actually. It's a ne it, it, it's used by neoliberals to excuse their own uh, their own lack of ethics. Um, but I would uh, I would think also to pull apart for a moment the you merge sort of effects and impacts with responsibilities, and I wanted to pull those apart really. I think there's one judgment is whether it does have a particular effect, and again the question would be over how long a time. And you can have a big media effect for a very short period of time, or you can have a very slow burning effect, which is is maybe more sustainable. But responsibilities, for, I found a very interesting term. Like, what are the responsibilities of the artist in these these conditions? Um, and I, and I'm and I wonder to what extent that goes the whole way. You know, that there, there, there might be a responsibility for an artist in starting something off and then trying to help it be maintained. But to load the responsibilities for social change onto the artistic practice alone seems to be a, heavy, a too heavy burden in a sense. It has to be then, at a certain point, that's taken on and responsibilities are shared at least, that there's a, there's a coming together of different interest groups which take on responsibility for themselves. And, and I think responsibility is a very important word. I agree with you that, that it should be present, but let's not get lost in a, or let's avoid becoming the, the sort of judges of, of the, the, the irresponsible artist, in a sense, um, which well, maybe isn't their job. I don't see, I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you engage in, I don't know, if we, we take an example out of the, uh, out of the 10, let's say, like for instance, the, 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 the Silent University project, I think the silent, uni if you engage in a project like the silent university, I would expect an, a project like that uh, to, to go on and on because it is an endless project. It may not be 
done by the same artist, but if the, the project is viable and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, responsibly led and conducted, it is a project that can be taken up in other places by other people using the modality that uh, but, but this who, artist I would agree, but whose responsibility is it? Is it Ahmed's responsibility alone to make sure that that's taken up, or who? How is that responsibility defined? Then I, that would be the question. The yeah. Power of an idea has response. Sorry, that's where one of the that's where beauty wins. Because yeah, beauty in in the sense that it's a beautiful idea. Oh, okay. It's a very beautiful idea, at the fundamental level. You look at it and you just go. Why hasn't that been thought of before? And why is it only happening there? There is not a city in the world that has migrants in it that doesn't need this project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the power of this project is the fact that you go, oh my God, this was obvious, but no one has done it yet. Well, and it, yeah, sure. But my point is that once you see it, in the full package, you see the whole possibility. Once you see the whole possibility, you see the way in which you would do it in your place, in your time, mm -hmm. and that's where the power of the responsibility comes from, not an individual, but from an idea which then spreads. But then to whom the money should go? Then to whom the money should go? For example, if it's something, you know what I mean? Like you said, there but be that, if, if we are to talk about that project specifically, yeah. uh, if I understood it correctly, Charles, leave it. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to sweep the floor now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we are to, if I understood the project correctly, uh, he's requesting, he's hoping for funding to establish an a online platform that will be accessible by everyone mm -hmm. and could create a modality that can be recuperated, reused by others. Mm -hmm. that's right. so, yeah. so, so, that's so, so the money might go to one person, but that person uses the money to make a platform for other people. Yeah. So in a paradoxical way, it's not going to one person, it's going to a community, mm -hmm. which has not yet been defined or, or doesn't have a boundary yet. But Thank you. But, it, but it's, I mean, it's important to remember that this is a production fund when we say who, who does the money yeah. go to. So it goes to the project rather than to... The then I have a question. Oh, sorry. So we, because the people at home are listening. Thank Hello. Yeah. Um, no, I was just thinking maybe, it, I mean, it's a group decision, obviously. But I think we're trying to establish criteria, but I also think we might get lost in, in discussion and it might be interesting to go through the all, all ten of the projects sure. one time just yeah, to, no, just will, to determine maybe that. what will they actually do. If, if you give me if you give me five five course, minutes because I'd like just to just to come to, to some vocabulary and okay. I think we're almost there. But if you Absolutely. give me five minutes and then we'll go through each project Absolutely. in turn. Absolutely because that's the I plan. Mean, for me my main question is I would really think it important to determine each project what will be done because some of them are more clear about it than others no I agree so and I, and I hope I hope we'll we'll do that in a minute but I think it's useful to have some measure because otherwise we're just talking about this project in terms of I don't know good or bad or something yeah so can, can maybe maybe some, we yeah. can we can we can it's helpful because it means that we can sort of round this up yeah, and not and uh, close it up. I know that Jana had a, had an issue with uh, with with question of, of whether the project was happening or not and I hope you can mention that in a minute but yeah. Tanya no I think I I was coming up for what you guys were saying and actually what you say is very appropriate because I think while I, their projects are very clear in the way they are being shown and very clear because they are very specific um, there are other projects like for example Beta Local who is an extremely complex it's almost an ecosystem that has so many aspects that needs to be developed that they are very hard to package to sell, let's say, or, to, or for people to understand very quickly, oh yeah, this is only about this one issue and it's very well, I'm not saying that I don't like the project, but I'm saying that some projects are very easily packaged and understood by everybody and trigger this imaginary idea in your head. Some other projects are extremely complex and that doesn't mean they are less efficient, 
or, or less important or they don't work and they don't use our criteria. So I think this is something I'm nervous when these kind of projects, social artwork are being analyzed, that um, it's easier to be drawn to projects that are very easily visualized by the, and other like, for example, as I said, Beta Local, who has like a school, a public uh, program, uh, invitations from resident artists. I guess something that is a bigger in a longer term um, scope is very hard to, to be happy very quickly about, you know? So I think this is also another criteria to, to look. Yeah, I think I, I can sort of underwrite that, that we should not forget that this is also a practice that comes with a lot of messiness. Mm -hmm. And it's also, I think we should watch out that we just don't clear out the messiness that comes with these projects. The fact that it is sort of like the way I like to talk about is, say, is, is talking about um, to the radicality of it, but the radicality for me is not always uh, only in making things more emergent, more prominent, more visible in the sense, but also in finding new ways of rerouting, in the, like the other, let's say, uh, explanation of the term. And in that rerouting, finding new connections, maybe re, re, readdressing or, or, or even rerouting uh, certain assist, assisting local context, that's quite often very messy. And that can you cannot always present clear cut because it's also an ongoing reworking so it's a reworking of the terrain uh, um, yeah as, as much as you can so I am also sometimes a little bit wary when things sound too much like it ticks all the boxes all the right connotations of both activism both engaged both visible both a little bit sexy a little bit so some of these things are just messy and making mistakes or being not afraid of messing up, in a sense, is very helpful in this kind of practice that you that you might have it wrong because you know uh, also. So I, yeah, I would bring that as a criteria as well about some the way in which things are worked at worked through. Yeah. So the the the, the amount of kneading uh, or molding that has literally been done, you know, uh, I find yeah, yeah. because yeah. And, it, and the time it takes, not so much in sustainability, but maybe in not only dura also maybe not only duration, but literally in the amount of reworking, retaking, re-entering, if you if you want. And then mm -hmm. these are all heavy words, but uh, yeah. I just want to it's add good. something to Jeanne very Please. quickly. I totally understand what you say, and I, I even think that it's part of a lot of process. But somewhere. Um, uh, maybe it's maybe it's my 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 background in uh, in teaching that is like I think that even in your messiness you have to be serious, but and 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 there is I think that I expect a level of seriousness in uh, in uh, in uh, uh, and especially when you say that when 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 your premise is socially socially engaged and politically engaged and. Uh, a lot of process cannot can, are not predictable, especially when you deal with you kind of, uh, you know. Uh, 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 but can could we could we understand so that under so under sort of terms like commitment and responsibility that yeah. that seriousness would yes, be that's what uh, I mean. would be sort of wrapped up within yeah. that? Would but you? my messiness was not no. to to not say that not responsibility. I just think that sometimes we have to watch out that in in the urgency to present things or to understand things we we might like you say follow things that are very clear cut so what, very what, quickly what, i what? oh sorry I just see that, um, I know, there might be many ways of working. There are two that it can be good for this conversation. Like, there are artists who do social engaged art. They are both serious. They are committed. They, they have all these qualities. But there are two methodologies. There are artists who, in the studio, come up with an idea that is fantastic. They go to wherever that has to be implemented, arrive with an idea, conceive in the form, in the everything and try to make that happen. And there are other artists who only have a vague idea of a goal they want to achieve, and they come to the place and they try to engage in the place and see how this goal can be achieved and having a process of arriving. So I think that's maybe what we are, they're not saying that one is invalidated and the other not. One is serious, they're both serious, they're both committed and all this, but there are different ways of working in. 
And uh, it's more sexy to have something clean, you know, and, and more visual in the sense that the... I, I have a question for, on my, for myself. I ask myself, but is, uh, is the art, um, uh, can art be engaged socially and a certain point to become real uh, political? Real politic, we have, many times people ask me, but you want to change the things, you speak about politic. If we offer you the possibility to be a, a part of, of, of a government, for example, would you accept, would, what would you do? And this, is, I think, is a problem. It's a real problem. Uh, how much an art, an art can be uh, stimulating, can be interacting, can be go f uh, deeply in the social uh, structures and, and uh, inter interfere, intervene. But um, as when you, you go to the political real uh, administration, uh, organization, uh, for a small city or for a big uh, or, or state, uh, I think this is something we have to ask ourselves. Um, if art is, it is still is something that cannot change, cannot change the word art from politic, this is the question probably we have really to, to, to think. Uh, this is a question that I, I offer to you. Or I think I that's know. what we were talking about when I mentioned effects and impact somehow. How far? Is we have to exactly go. We have to the go. impact? I, I, normally, I answer that I would not accept for any reason to be a, polit a politic, but to, to implement, to influence, to, to create the ground for it, yes, but not more. This, I think, because if we can change the mentality of the people, this is our job, to change the mentality of the people that will vote. But and as in uh, the mentality of the people will be able at a certain moment to to ask somebody to 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 travel uh, to work to work in a very specific way uh, re representing the people but in the real way uh, honestly friendly as you said we we need to have a friend there I think I mean I mean also maybe to, to, to respond to that in, 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 in a way that I would think about it. I think there are in 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 a way maybe to try and explain it simply that it seems to me there are there are economic facts, there are cultural facts and there are political facts. And these facts are invisible to each other. So in other words, what we have is a situation now where everything is judged through an economic framework. And that economic framework ignores both the political facts, actually, which it dominates, and the cultural facts, which it marginalizes into the entertainment industry and into the decoration of, for the 1%. But, but there are, nevertheless, cultural facts which are of equal value. And a balanced society would, would have a balance between these three fields. And I think that's the danger, that if art becomes politics, then it starts to deal in political facts rather than in cultural facts. And at that moment, actually, the art is lost because then we start to have this, we start to be dealing in another language and start to be dealing with another set of criteria, negotiation with power, essentially. This is the aesthetic. No? Yeah. This yeah. is the aesthetic yes. that probably the politics doesn't have. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think, I mean, the word aesthetic we all have problems with, but it's hard to get away from it as well because it's, it's, it, it's the, the facts maybe that we can, we can deal with in a certain sense, at least historically. Um, so I think that's where, the, for me, that's where the, 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 to maintain the, the, the zone of culture the, 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 as, a, as a, an equal voice alongside the political and the economic seems to be much more important than to become political or to become economic, you know, essentially an artist like Damien Hirst is an economic artist. I mean, his, his engagement is entirely economic. He's dealing with that and no longer with aesthetics nor with politics. What do you mean by politics? Because we have somebody like Augusto Boal who actually changed laws through art. Yeah, but he changed, so he changed, mean? yeah, but he, but he, I mean, there's a difference between Augusto Boal and Gilberto Gil, maybe, and that would be the difference, I would say. It's about using the cultural facts to influence politics or becoming a politician. Okay. Oh, you soon do. <laughs> he also became minister of culture of Senegal. But I, but I would again say that, like with Gilberto Gil, although they're great people, yeah, they're, they're, but I think that that step is. I, it's not that that step is right or wrong, I think it's impossible, actually, because I think then you have to deal with another set of conditions and you become a politician and you're no longer 
working within the, the realm of culture. Can I um, ask a question? Maybe it's not a criteria, but something that maybe should be thought about when looking at the projects is the kind of in institutional infrastructure around certain projects. Some of the projects have a kind of insti uh, embedded within institutions or have institutional backing. Some things are very much a set of individuals working alone. And I think that when you're talking about production and the longevity of projects, these things should be thought about. Yeah, I think that's true. I think it, it, it. I think that that's, in a way. I mean, maybe I can to sum up quickly. I can go through some of the criteria. I mean, we're not going to use these absolutely, but some of the vocabulary that we entered, and then. Oh, good. Sorry. Um, Sorry. Um, thank you. And another criteria I would suggest that maybe was implicit in all your words is uh, how the project and the model is able to provide is open and permeable to the community issues like mm -hmm. um, how is uh, able to uh, empower the texture so that the projects are autonomous and they don't need any more uh, the artistic interventions or they are at the same level. Uh, this is quite important and uh, um, so I'm looking at uh, for example the rural villages in Puya run by Fernando Doria Garcia. Mm -hmm. um, I mean it's a kind of Step further, if you go and uh, try to, um, in, to interact with people from the designing of the project and not just in the result. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's, that's good. I'm Can gonna, I just um, yeah. underline some of these please. points? Yeah, please. Because going back to Jean's point about messiness and about your point now about the environment, which is also similar to what Nick said about the institution, I think we it'd be useful to think about how an individual project is situated in an environment and how that environment is defined as open, closed, flexible, um, permeable, uh, messy, but it's a complex ecology between the individuals and their teams and their tools and the broader community. So that sense, it, uh, I, sense I suspect that the term environment might encapsulate that complex ecology between individual tools, individuals' tools in the community and the permeability between and the flexibility of those different elements. That's good. I think um, to not frustrate our friend any further, I think we should go straight to... Can I make just a, a, a late, last oh, sorry, yeah. intervention? Of course, Paolo. Sorry. I know we've got a, a job to Some do tools. and come up with... with uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, with, with the... Um, uh, award, but uh, um, we are also experimenting here with this format, so um, uh, I will try to push um, as well uh, this experimental phase to its limit by uh, introducing another possibility to, um, as a criterion. Uh, I see that one issue that is probably um, uh, common to all the projects uh, and also to our process here is uh, the uh, it's educational experiential uh, element and I think that this is extremely important as we're dealing with uh, um, um, systems where expertise and competencies um, institutions are dying, are dead, certainties are, are dead as we know but these processes are allowing people to um, become expert through experience. And this notion is, um, I, I feel very much close to what politics or new politics or new sense of democracy is about. And, and, and so I would suggest that we keep an eye on, on this. Very good, thank you. Um, are there any? I, th I would like to go on. Basically, I hope that people feel that we've dealt with the criteria. I will maybe come back to them at certain times, but I'm not going to list them now. I'd like to actually start and address the various projects. And we could take them, Matteo, should we take them in order of uh, how we were working on them? Be That's before great. that, can we disclose who knows which project? Because I feel uncomfortable that I'm close to many of these projects. And I think as we go through each project, you can, can make that, that statement. Okay. Jana? I think, but I, I also mentioned that before, that there is also disclosing which projects we know, or I think it's important, but also I think 
Um, there is a difference that some projects feel that they are already really working for a longer period of time, or the, and, and some other projects sound more like a funding application. So where, uh, yeah, that balance I think is, is quite interesting also, and I feel that some things are really already, even as a start of a project, more embedded than other things. So I, I feel like that's also to the maybe the visible organization what is the price given for, for the production of a work or for the extension of the production of a work. So is for the production of a new work or for the extension of an existing project. And that, I feel, in the selection of 10 is not evenly balanced. So uh, that's just, that's a really a question to the organization. I think, I mean, maybe we can also address that in the question of sustainability or viability, because yeah. clearly a new project, we could say much less about its viability than one that's already under discussion. Um, so we can maybe maybe touch on that both in terms of does this really exist or not and also is it sustainable? Yeah. But also I think for Visible it's quite interesting because there's a lot of funding bodies and there's some in the room um, that uh, for funding bodies it's quite often more interested to fund a new project than uh, to give money towards a project to sustain an, an ongoing project. And so for the Visible Award it's also interesting where to locate itself. And for instance, this is not, of course, Dune is, some, some, is an organization that funds recurrently projects, but that's not very common. So the new is quite often already championed. So I just want us to be aware of that. Just. Very good. Can we, uh, can we start? And I think we've got about uh, 10 minutes or so per project, so, so we, we shouldn't be too long, but we should give an idea. And then I would ask, then I want to extend it, obviously, to the rest of the public also to express ideas about that. Um, the first project is, is um, uh, Sami uh, Baloji, uh, is the project called uh, Kumbaka. Um, just to remind you that's working with an archive of images or discovering an archive of images and turning an archive of images in, in, uh, uh, in, in uh, Congo, in Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, and then recycling them in different ways, using them as an archive, but also using them for his own work uh, and using them for a number of ways in which the attention could be drawn to this mostly Belgian colonial gaze on this, uh, on this part of the world. I wonder who would like to start by making a comment of this or, or thinking about these criteria like translatability or friendship or sustainability um, or commitment, responsibility, using some of those terms that we've come, come about. Who would like to comment on yeah, that? Yeah, just maybe to say that the, the, the prize would go to the establishment of, a, of, a, of an online platform of this archive that would be shared with a network of institutions that are operating within uh, the African territory, but not only, also with the, uh, let's say, colonial countries that uh, that uh, have direct relationships and, and bonds with, with those countries. Just so we could say also that 25,000 would go quite far in actually achieving that goal, I could imagine, that uh, that would be quite an effective And, and as the artist says, it would start through an open call to Belgian citizens to, re to reacquire, let's say, images from the private archives of Belgians that have memories connected, uh, photographs connected to the colonial time. And then it would uh, start with the archive of the Museum of Central Africa in Treveren in Brussels, uh, digital, asking for the digitalization of the archive. So this would be. I have a question here. You seem, uh, you seem to know the project very well. I know Sami's work and his use of the archive in his own uh, 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 photographic uh, uh, production. but. Uh, if he gets the award, he would use the fund for engaging other national archives in other African countries, or would it be to engage other art professionals for the Congolese National Archive, or how is it? Because I, it's not quite clear. Yeah. We, I mean, I can only answer from what we received from okay. the artists, of course. And uh, it, would, it says that it would start with the, with, the, with the Democratic Republic of Congo, so directly addressing first the archives in Belgium, private and public, and then in the archives also of Congolese people. And so it, would, it, it seems to me that uh, what he proposes on a national scale of the of the Democratic Republic of Congo. But then the spread of this image, or let's say that this platform would be shared with other institutions that has a list 
that we all you all can consult also in this booklet. And in the list, he, he, you know, it doesn't only mention uh, institutions in uh, in Africa. Yours is also part of the yeah, yeah, yeah. of the network, but also uh, let's say other like uh, Bangladesh or uh, there's another one in. Um, uh, there was another one out of Africa, but some in France, of course, in the United Kingdom, and uh, yeah, so in Lebanon, okay, that is more Middle East, so yeah. So the idea would be maybe that this archive would be accessible through also these uh, other existing networks, and perhaps to share other archives through this, uh, through this platform. Can I solicit some comments as well if there's not any further questions uh, no, no, no. so I mean I can I can well people can read this no I don't need to read yeah it. but uh, it would be nice to make it more to, to say it, I think no I mean so okay that we, so yeah, this is this is so it, there's a number of people that were asked to comment on it and I can read this out the strong sense of social engagement is noticed strongly in his artistic work and extends in his practice through the initiation and co-organization of the Biennale de Lumbabashi the Lumbumbashi. The initiative turns the city of Lumbumbashi from a site of sources for researchers and artists into a site of creative actions, artistic production and diffusion. Adopting a strategy that uses the public spaces, buildings and billboards, the Biennale aims to build up a community that would claim in the future the organization's ownership. I'm not sure how much that helps, but I have to say. Yeah, I, <laughs> no, because the, the idea was the idea was to have uh, you know an external point of view that would stress something. In this case, I think what would help is to know that an art is an artist that has organizational skills that allowed him to build a, a biennial. That's true. And, I mean, th this is what I mean. Is, and of course, what we asked to the curators is to highlight an aspect that is, was not coming out from the application, but that would still present the characteristic of the practitioner that would help us understand and assess uh, his capability of making this, pro this, this, you know, or to continue the project. Uh, no, that sounds uh, reasonable. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We, we, we faced that, sorry, last year with the Festival de Performance de Cali, where it was very important to see also how a previous experience would allow us to understand how sustainable and feasible was the thing. It's also why in the second edition we focused on projects that already exist or, yeah. as you said before, artists that have a track record of making these kind of projects happen. Yeah. I, I personally, I mean, I feel, I feel sort of concerned and uh, I, I personally don't see the social engagement. I see an archival practice in photography and uh, a concern about historical material, a concern about uh, political, uh, 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 political history. And uh, I see, um, but all that flows into his personal work, which, uh, is not necessarily for me shared in a wider sense as a community. It's not like a community work or a community program. It's an interest in the archive, and which is fair enough, legitimate and everything, but uh, I miss the community around it. And I mean, it's uh, Sami will kill me if he's listening to this. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I you think know? I think you are right. I think you're right. Yeah. Also, because we have seen the intervention here, they are personal intervention, in the is is own uh, individual intervention, very effective, but very very artistic in the personal way of react putting together images of the archive and his own way to to do it. In this way, is become very very individual, much much more. Than, uh, than, than uh, a community activity. Yeah. Mm. I, 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 I would also... Is there anybody that would... Yeah. would, uh, would I, mean, I think that's quite a clear critique. Is yeah. there somebody that would like to argue against it? Because yeah, I think um, it, also sorry. in the audience, if yeah. there's anybody that would like to argue against it, I'd be happy I, I to don't, I'm not so much arguing against it, but I would like to um, um, pick up the point that Koya made, which is in a sense that this project is very worthy 
and it will be repeated and it's already begun in many places because the phenomenon exists in many places. Yeah. But it's already um, been undertaken in different ways all over the world already. So there is a sense that while we, I think, accept that this is a worthy project in and of its own terms, it's not a unique one and, and it's one that's got various parallels that has already 20 years at least of history around it. And so I see in many indigenous communities the same kind of effort to reinscribe themselves against the history of Eurasia, to, re, uh, uh, to raid the archive in order to establish an identity <laughs> that is otherwise lacking in the institutions. And so whether you're an indigenous person in, in, in a first world country or a, a colonized people in a, in, a, in a nation, a formerly colonized people of a nation, you are still both struggling against that history of Eurasia. And so, in a sense, this project is consistent with that broader um, historical sweep. But I don't see it as somehow providing a, a new modality for people other than, than, than a reminder that we all need to do it for ourselves. And yeah. just uh, because I think Judith and I can play a bit the artist uh, lawyers in some way, because maybe we, we've spent more time on these projects being the curator of. The, and just to say that, the, that the, the community to which this project referred to is a potential community, perhaps, because it says that this archive would be then available through also universities, through also institutions, so not necessarily only through an artistic work, but other kind of work, so to re own the, the image. Of, of, of the time of the colonization and, and, and the history of Congo. And, uh, and yes, this would be one aspect. And the other thing that, uh, just, just because I, I, I take elements from the application, another thing that is said in the video is about this school that is set, set up, of which I know anything, just what I've seen in the video. Maybe you know much more than I do. And he, so this idea of resharing not uh, uh, this archive, not only the archive, but also the practice that it does. So it's not just about realizing his own work but also resharing uh, through a school uh. but then I would I would ask you what what will be the purpose of you know I mean these archives are not hidden anyone who would want to access this can access it access it I mean we don't need Sami to help us access the archive you know what I mean, or anyone who would want to. So, and that that's why I think that the, the social engagement, I see social justice and social engagement a little bit in another way, like an, as an enabler to something that otherwise would not be possible, maybe, you know. So, and that criteria for me here is not, and, and second, and uh, is that, a lot of that flows into a work that is autonomous and not communal. That I think it's really... No, that that yeah. was clear. Yeah. Um, I mean, one uh, thing we should move on, one thing maybe in its defense, would, which is a different way of looking at it, is, is the, effect, the potential effect in Belgium. Because what he's doing is addressing private archives in Belgium, which are not accessible, so it's not the National Archive. And I think given the, the, the we could say absolute or relative, denial of the colonial history that exists in this country, in Belgium, in most of Western Europe, or the, not necessarily denial, simply the refusal to deal with it as a fact which impacts on the present. It's simply locked away in some past which happened before the Second World War. And, you know, and that was all fine, and now we started again. So, so that, that process um, uh, in Belgium might actually be quite a revealing one. Now, that's not really a community, or it's a community of colonials who uh, might not feel they want to have a voice in that project, and that would also be interesting to the extent that they would feel uh, enabled in any sense to speak about their memories. 
think also you're saying that the accessibility of the private collections, but it's really also the, the archive of the Museum of the Vuren would not be, it's not accessible to researchers or students, for example, in Africa, because it's not online. I think this, the fact that he's putting uh, the archive online would really give uh, the, the potentiality also to many, many young people and students to, to, to discover this archive. They can, maybe they cannot afford to go to Belgium and to discover these archives the museum and private collections. If I, um, if I, I think, can, we, can oh. we move on? I think we've made some, oh, could I, yeah, sorry. Could I just say Please. one? Uh, actually, two things I'd like to add. Um, one is just a basic fact that I'm, I thought I'd share, uh, is that the actual, the museum for Central Africa, as it's called, which is a colonial museum that exists in Brussels, and it's about to close, or already close, for a similar thing that we had here in the Netherlands with the state again, in Amsterdam and Rex. It will, and, Oh, no, I just mean it'll be shut down for, for renovation for a period of like 10 years. So it's, at the same time, it is interesting to do it while it's closed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if, if the artist is aware of that fact, but just as a, as a thinking rug, that might make the project more interesting, that we, we close down the actual museum, but we're stirring the archive. Yeah. That said, I also agree that how many times should we keep on relabeling, reshuffling, re unpacking, repacking these archives that are already existing and it, it, to some degree are always less or more professionally you know, accessible. Um, and I think, yeah, there's, I was looking at, if, if these are the images that we've seen or his personal artistic practice, then I'm thinking if, you, if, we, if we would support this project, we're just offering him endless supply of <laughs> imagery to work on. Um, so in that sense, it's, it's a deliciously selfish project that we would all, what, what you said, we should all do that for ourselves. Um, but in, yeah, so to me, I, I have the same feeling that it doesn't really serve any community otherwise than the very broad one that he's addressing, which is also maybe not feasible. I mean, there's Nepal in there, what you said also. So I, I think maybe in that sense, it's also a, a lack of focus. Mm -hmm. um, are there any more comments? I'd like, quite like to move on because I think we've, we've sort of covered it fairly extensively and uh, um, we can draw our own conclusions, I think, from that discussion about where it is in the ranking. Um, m number two is, is Beta Local, which is instantly present, From Tool to Tool, um, which is a project in Puerto Rico, which is a, has an awkward relationship with the United States, I think, is, is, is partly the United States and partly not. Um, and uh, this is a very extended project, and they have a specific element within this very extended project. Matteo, maybe you could say a little bit about, oh, sorry, um, Judith, can you say a little bit about the, the, the use of the money? What, what would the money be used for in this case? They are, uh, they of course, they have an activity and a program that they are really running uh, daily. And what we are for forcing for with the, with the award would be really to implement this program. So to develop certain projects that they are would like to, uh, to extend in, in, in a way. So they were really uh, proposing five actions that uh, we have seen this morning presented in the, in the video. And uh, the, the award would uh, go for that, to realize these five projects. Can I just, just ask for, it's more a point of clarification then. I mean, 25,000 is a lot of money, but also a small amount of money, depending on which scale you're talking about. For five projects, that would be then 5,000 each. Would that really uh, ha have an impact on, on their work? I guess, yes. We have also to, under, to consider that, for example, also with Elena Producciones, it was 25,000 euro in euro, but uh, to shift it then in a South American context, it's a big... Yes, but still it's a, a different, it has a different value. Of course, now that we say we do all the, realize all the five projects, I, I, I think we, we have to discuss with them also what is possible to do, but I think it's more, uh, if we uh, think that kind of propositions they make, they're interesting enough to, to be uh, supported. Okay, I'm still not quite the wise. I don't think they've made it clear, but, uh, but, but let's uh, imagine that, uh, that, that all five projects can be helped by this. Tanya. <laughs> I think I've been done. I know quite well the people running the project, and I was in the project, and I know how how savvy they are about like using every penny and distributing as as many pro, uh, projects as possible in uh, in a good quality. So not uh, 
So I think uh, the, I really would like to talk about this project because um, I feel that not only it has a long tradition, so this is a, a project I started recently, but the people working in it uh, did a very important work uh, called Puerto Rico 01, 02, 03, and they did these kind of events every year. And they were pioneers, let's say, in Latin America and also uh, in the United States, but they relate to, more to Latin America. You said to a Puerto Rican United States is kind of offensive for some of them. Um, I, I said they had an awkward relationship yes, with the United yeah. States, but they have one. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> but the thing is the, um, they, they have been extremely influential. They are very, very serious people who not only uh, want to create practices, but they have a real theoretical background behind this. There are people who really do a, a stand research before they embark in, in a project. And uh, they really sustain also over time, not only the artists, but the community. And I witnessed personally being there and seeing the relation that they have with people in the community. So it's really this uh, proposal they have about uh, bringing artists and community together is really happening. So it's something that I really feel they are part of the project, even if they are not artists and they have this kind of, uh, I don't know, ownership, which I think is... Um, is Matteo uh, would like me to read out the quote. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> Beta Local is alive. Its commitment to the creative reorganization of thought, environment and daily practice embraces experimentation from the most practical and minimal detail of running a space to the political responsibility of setting up a cultural institution which discourse emerges from and with the community that recognizes itself in the process of creating it, an ecological learning process. And to finish my thought, um, I think the other thing that is good about Beta Locali is, is very well respected in Latin America. So anything happening there will have an impact not only locally, but also in the kind of continental uh, uh, aspect. To put it very briefly, um, I'm also impressed, but not with any insider knowledge, just by the observation, which is immediately striking that there's a very complex ecology that's at play here. And so our previous discussion about how rich is the project in, in relationship to a, a wider environment, this is one that strikes me as having a very um, sophisticated set of networks and tendrils and outreach structures that therefore suggest that it's incredibly um, embedded at, the, at one level and very outwardly looking at another level. So it's a very complex ecology for me. Jenna. Yeah, in that sense, I, I, um, I agree, knowing the work also um, a little more than a little. The only thing that worried me here was um, um, this sort of like presentation of the five possible projects because for instance the making the sort of clothes from uh, wood or something like that or the netting or stuff like that f sounded suddenly very forced. Uh, almost like we have to come up with five projects or, or with five examples. So I, this, this here for me I find it really in ca case like say okay you know uh, this is very interesting work that is produced. They can use the money to just keep doing what they're doing and they're doing it very well. And then suddenly there's these five projects. So I'm like, yeah, I'm a, a bit confused there. I, I have to say that because that with, with the five examples, not with all five, I was convinced. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I kind of agree with this, but I, I, knowing the way they work, they're a very flexible and very self-critical project. So I'm sure if they're listening to this, they will reflect on it and they will not just do it. They're not this kind of people who just have an idea and execute it. And do the next one, and I say, they're not doers in that way, they are thinkers. I mean, so I'm I, sure. I think that, that's, this, that's, this, this is something maybe the format of, of this uh, sort of like brings forward that people then say, okay, let's have let, to do something. To do something, I, I, something. I suppose it, it, I mean, it's a bit of a leading question, but I want to ask about the aesthetics of the proposal. I mean, when I saw the. Okay, this is this is this is me having an opinion about it. But the the aesthetics of the clothes uh, troubled me a little. I have to I have to be, be frank, um, and and I and I wasn't sure whether that 
the product lines, why exactly that was there. I can, I, certainly in terms of sustainability and engaging with the economic system, I would have no problem with that. But it wasn't clear to me whether they were, whether they were products that would feed into that system or whether they were simply, as, as Jana says, maybe the result of wanting to say, oh, something, something real will happen. Which, which maybe we're less, uh, less concerned about than, than, than they might think in the application. I don't know. Or maybe it's not about the doing the thing it would. Maybe it's about what you create around that activity. And that's it, very the, hard the to put The problem is that I have to judge it. You know, you have a, and I totally accept it's really useful, that knowledge. But when I look at the, at, at the, the, the aesthetics, I mean, if we talk about the activist element and the engagement with the community, I think it's really clear that we would all be enthusiastic about it. But some of the some of the choices of 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 how that's the separation, I suppose, of the aesthetics and the and the and the ethics in the sense of these clothing products that could go into some sort of uh, you know I don't know sort of dark side fashion exhibition or something like that, you know, which isn't very fashionable. Um, but but, but it, it would, that, that bothers me a little bit. But do you find this in all the five projects or only one of the projects? Because um, maybe I think it's that's the, 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 the main one. I think like the walking project feels much more sustainable and valuable. There are five and, projects, and so maybe that artist has that aesthetic. They invited that artist. So. Yeah. Koyo, can I ask you to? Um, um, I don't really know. I... I like it because it's sexy. It's definitely sexy. And it's sort of well packaged. I mean, Tanya mentioned that it could be better packaged, but I think it's already extremely attractive. Uh, the whole angles that they take to do uh, uh, the, the I mean, to, to do the project and the, uh, the formats that they use, uh, the communal, they use food, which is always very good sign for me. And, uh, um, but at the same time, um, I have to honestly say that I, I don't really know because I don't know this project and I really have to, I mean, I learned about it when I was uh, looking at the, at the material for, for the jury, but uh, uh, it's a bit difficult for me to make a, to have an opinion. It's surely something that I'm in favor of, uh, but to what, to which extent and for what exactly, I'm not quite sure yet. Any comments from the audience in relation to this project? Or any questions about it? Or you all remember it, I hope. No? When was it set up? When was it set up? This was in 2000, 2009. 2009. So it's been going for a few years. It's not like a one off thing. No, I mean, I think the sustainability or the the, the commitment is clear. It's, it's, for me, it's a question of the, the of, of what they're doing with the results of it. I think I'm, I'm sticking with that critique. Um, right. If we move to the third um, issue, people, if you want to come back on this, of course, you're more than welcome. Um, the third one is the Museum of Public Concerns. It's already up there. Um, Museum of Public Concerns, a Brazilian project in, in Minas Gerais with May Betonico. Um, again, I'm going to ask which one of you is responsible for that? Mateo, um, what would they do with the 25,000? Okay, it's a complex project as uh, we have seen through the video. With the 25,000, they would set up this mobile uh, uh, device through which uh, the uh, alternative uh, archives uh, that, that, has a, 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 that has a narrative around Minas Gerais history. So they archive the pictures that they, you see here, no? These archives that are uh, made uh, um, through the, the dialogue with the people, unions of workers or uh, indigenous people living in the area. So all those voices that are not uh, asked when they are thinking about building these museums about the area. And so with this traveling device, not only they would make this material travel, but they would gather other material in order to set up uh, uh, a museum of public concerns where these alternative narratives are, uh, are spread, uh, uh, say, around the, the, the region. And they're not clear about, uh, let's say, where it will take place, the museum. 
So, but I, they mention a lot of institutions that could be used, I think. Um, maybe I could start because this is another archive project to say if we could think it in relationship to Samin Bajoli's uh, um, project and, and the critiques that we had that it wasn't community uh, uh, engaging. Is that a place that somebody would like to start to compare the two a little bit? Very quickly. I think that um, following what Koyo was saying long ago, I think it's a moment in which it's not enough for social engaged art to show us something, to tell us what we kind of already know, but just propose to do something with that knowledge. And that's something that is, when I saw the title, I was very excited because it really put me in this other moment that I'm not feeling in, in the proposal. You know what I mean? So. I have questions. Is it, I mean, if I understood you correctly, Matteo, is something that they are planning to do or is something that they are already doing? They, what they have started already to do is to collect the material and we have also some images we've seen in the presentation before where they, uh, Mabe, the artists, Mabe Bitonico, take advantage of certain other invitations to exhibitions either to collect this material or to start to show it. So he started this as, a, a, as a, an artist's work, so as his work, and then now he wants to go towards this further step, bigger step. Yeah. Uh, yeah of implementing the archive. Yeah. It's a traveling museum. In some way, yes. should be a traveling, not the project, yes. it's a yes, traveling museum. Yes, because this mobile device mobile. is a museum itself. But yeah, I don't know if you foresee a final presentation. And it can be, expand it can be expandable because as material is added, as bigger yes. it becomes. Yes, and it's like in dialogue. Like project, basically. <laughs> yes, and, and uh, is uh, expanding it by being in touch with uh, with different communities. Uh, he mentions that are that are, let's say, the the, the, the pivotal uh, protagonists of the Minagerais modernization, because he mentions also the modernization of Brazil as a failure and how this community became disfranchised after the failure of this modernization. And yeah, all the materials also deal with that. I, I would um, like to say a, a few words in, in support of this project. I was, again, very enthusiastic, and I love the title. It, I found it inspirational. Um, I, I also liked the idea that it's a mobile device, and it speaks to mobility, but history at the same time. It speaks to the mobility of goods and, and the servicing of mobility. Train stations. Now these are also public assets that are increasingly being transferred to private corporations. And here is a process of critical intervention into a global phenomenon. The transfer of primary pr products from places like Brazil and then where they, they are processed in other parts of the world and then the, the processed goods are returned back to be purchased. This is an old colonial story in a neo-colonial period. And so here is a, an opportunity for us to reflect on what is um, a public asset today. And there's another project which we'll be talking about next, I think, which also reflects on the idea of a post office. And it, um, in, in both instances, the train station and the post office were public assets, infrastructure for mobility and communication. Now, our modes of communication and our modes of transportation today have changed from the 19th century. But our need to both communicate and to have transportation hasn't. And increasingly, governments around the world have been selling off those assets, but not replacing the infrastructure for the contemporary uses. And here is, I think, an instance of an intervention in this global phenomenon of the transfer of public assets into private interests and an opportunity for us to critically claim back our public space. And this is a matter of concern, as they say. <laughs> so I would um, promote this project very strongly. And there's another element. And there's another text that I'd happily read out. Thank you. Um, it is not a museum specifically devoted to one subject or another, important as this that would be, but dedicated to the principle of public discussion itself. 
in the huge and spontaneous protests that occurred earlier this year in, in Brazil, which some of you will know about, uh, it was essentially the middle classes who took to the streets. What struck most observers was the fact that everybody arrived with his or her own claim on a placard. Each of them has a story to tell. And this story is without doubt quite different from the one that will be told in a company-run museum. And I think also, I mean, the, the, the background in Brazil is maybe, because I'm working there at the moment, is maybe worthwhile to, to understand that this, uh, you know, there is a sort of notionally leftist government under Lula and under um, uh, Dilma now. Um, but uh, uh, the, the, the processes of privatization of these assets, which is exactly what Nikos talked about, is still going ahead. And, you know, the, the, the crucial um, deficiencies in Brazil are, are infrastructure and education. That's what everybody will tell you from the from Jilma Rousseff herself all the way down to the people uh, who are living on one dollar a day, as we uh, as we heard about in another project. And that and that uh, that process is uh, is, uh, is is ongoing. So this so this challenge is something which uh, which is very current within Brazilian um, society. And of course, a lot of the protests were around the question of mobility within, within the big cities and, and raising the cost of buses. Exactly, cost of bus tickets. Yeah. Thank you. And well, I, I also think that uh, I have another question before I tell. It's uh, so wherever the, the, the installation is made or the, the device is, uh, is used, uh, will there, do you know if there will be like a company in programs or is it just there yeah. for people to see and uh, what will be kind of the, the community and social engagement with it? Yes, always of course the responding from the material we have, it speaks about the Praça da Libertad as this uh, uh, space, that, uh, public space that is completely been uh, uh, taken over by privatization, where there were different institutions that were connected to uh, to the to the infrastructure, to the, to the modernization of the country, to the to the mining history of the of the region, and that, that are now taken over by uh, companies that uh, will uh, start these museums, you know, in this uh, area. So I guess that the the the, the, the traveling museum would be mainly operating within the, those premises, let's say, as a counter discourse to the in ongoing museums that are being made. And also in the moment of collecting, it would travel in the, in the region of uh, Minas Gerais. So this is what I assume from... It will travel only in the region of Minas Gerais? Yes. Not yeah. in the rest of Brazil? No. In the state of Minas Gerais, no, because it's a... Uh, it's which is big. <laughs> a lot bigger than Holland. <laughs> I know. I think, I mean, also, if we compare with, uh, I'll come to you in, in a minute, just if, if we compare it with Sam uh, um, Balogi's uh, project, it's, it's also interesting that it's much more specifically addressed, you know, where you talk about the whole of the archive of colonial, uh, the Belgian Congo, essentially, the colonial period in, in, in Central Africa. Here you're talking about the mining and a little bit confusingly the ind indigenous as well that was that was added there and I'm not sure how that relates but it seems much more located and specific than than the other one in an interesting way I think because then the archive can be played with more. Eva, sorry, can you uh, can you get a microphone? Because there are people watching. On, I have to say, actually, that, that I've got a couple of SMSs. People are saying that they don't know who we are. So maybe next time we could just introduce ourselves for those people that have been uh, watching. Thank you. Okay. Um, in a way, you actually covered what I had in mind. My question, which is probably a question of ignorance, is. Um, in what way the tools that this project produces may be comparable to the tools that Sami, Sami's project produces, and in what way could they not actually, yeah, is it possible to compare them? Can it be that what this project wants to do can also be served by the tools produced by the other project? But actually, I think it's very similar to what you were just saying. I think I mean I mean for me there's, there's quite a difference. One is the specificity, and the second is the question of mobility in the region itself, and the and the relationship that that might build up with with people in different communities within uh, Minas Gerais, and that 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 seems to answer something. I mean it seems to be more layered and complex, to put it yeah. simply, than than yeah. the other one, uh, which is which feels more generalist in its address. But I don't know. People are welcome to disagree with me on that. Uh, do we have any question from Twitter or stuff like that? 
No, okay. And also, if uh, if it uh, as a matter of comparison, I think Sami's project is uh, one that is uh, uh, very much sort of geared towards his own production, whereas this project, I think, is geared to kind of unpacking and making accessible. And uh, I, mean, I don't see an auto autonomous kind of signature here, which I think makes a, a, a whole big difference. I, th I think the question of programming and what will be done with this sort of mobile institution is really important though, because if it's just a case of creating a mobile institution and driving around, then it's, it's a nice project. But if there's not uh, relationships with specific places or specific people or things happening, then, you know, it's just, you're just creating an institution. You need to do something with what you're creating. So I'd, I'd love to know if there's any more specific details on that. Well, I think maybe, I mean, Charles, you, you can say a bit more about it because you're in the middle of it. And I think, I mean, Minas Gerais as a, as a region in, uh, in Brazil, is uh, is one that is uh, that has uh, traditionally uh, produced uh, uh, a lot of workers uh, for the Brazilian industry and economy, but at the same time, due to racial, historical uh, um, kind of constellation, is one that is very underserved at the same time, so to speak. So. And I think that in uh, in that context, or am I wrong? In that context, I mean, it's more in the yeah, northeast. It's exactly. more further to the north that you have that. I mean, but it's, it's, it's true. It's, 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 it's in that, that direction. It's in that frontier. It's in, it's in that context. You had a lot of a, a lot of mining was there, so yeah. people were actually working in the mining. Whereas exactly. in the northeast, people were being shipped out to mm -hmm. to the south, including to Minas Gerais, to, mm -hmm. to be miners that were moving down. So it, it's a slight. It's a, sort of in between the rich mm -hmm. belt of of Sao Paulo, Rio, and and mm -hmm. to the south and the, 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 the population resource, in a sense, which was the north and northeast. Yeah. Can, I, can I interrupt? Because I think um, also with the first project, I think what we, we with this project, uh, I do agree with Nick that the fact knowing if there is really also a program of sharing this information is very important because one of the criteria we spoke about is also this learning or this collective learning. So if it's only about collecting and showing, or collecting and presenting or representing, and there's not a component of how we then uh, how we then in interpret this information or share this information or debate information, then then I find it yeah I find it also problematic. So I think to, that we have to keep watching for that element as well. I mean, that's it's true. It's also in relation to to Sami Bagioli's project. Just, I give you is it, maybe that is interpreted more because it's interpreted through his own work. So there is a process of interpretation which happens, and here maybe it's less clear what that interpretation might be. I, I just ask, what is uh, uh, the possible activation that can be produced around that? This is what is in interesting for me. Um, the, the knowledge is something, but the activation that comes from this knowledge should be, should be part of the project. But in the proposal that he, the, the, that he sent us also was also indicated that it's not just to, to, to set up the mobile museum, but also to activate it with food workshops, also with schools and with community centers. So I think it, there will be a display that uh, can, can be used also to present this material, but the main, uh, uh, the, the main aim was also to work with this material and and to, to create a yeah. debate around. So I think he was indicating, he was speaking about workshops, so it's not just to, to, to the project present it. The project started in 2012, and Mabe is also teaching at the university, so he plans to run, to run it until 2015, so he has a specific schedule, let's say. I think it's a she. But it's a she? Are you, are you sure? Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I met her, and she was a she at that point. <laughs> um, are there any more comments on this this project? I, I think we talked about the programming, and I think that 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 remains uncertain. I think we have to we have to acknowledge that that's not really articulated in the proposal, as far as I can see, and it's not articulated in the presentation. So I think that remains a question mark over something which otherwise has quite a lot of support. Um, we can go on to the project I just mentioned uh, uh, just before, the One Dollar Project by Vapana Audiovisual Research Center uh, in, based in Cambodia, but this is a, a 
global project very much. I hope you all remember it, the idea of making a seven minute film by the 1.2, no, was it one, no, more than that. The one dollar a day. One dollar a day people, which was, which was what, 17% of the population, world's population, 1.2 billion or something, yeah. That's the population of China though, it sounds small. It's, I thought it'd be higher, but anyway, 1.2 1, 1 billion people who are earning less than one dollar a day. Um, comments, please, on this one, from anybody? Oh, I can read out the text. Hey, man. Of course. Well, I, I, I always enjoy this bit. So, um, before April the seventeenth, nineteen seventy-five, there were about three hundred feature films produced in Cambodia. Today, about thirty survived. Most of these films are slowly retrieved from sources outside Cambodia since the nineteen nineties by the Bapana Audiovisual Research Center. There is another side to the Bopana story, one that is equally important as retrieving history. It's about inventing the future via storytelling. Bopana has been involved in work, working with young filmmakers in Cambodia to equip them with skills to produce their own content by in-house workshops in order to talk about their immediate urban situation. So these are two projects we're talking about which are actually um, not uh, how the money will be spent. I think we know how the money will be spent on the production and the uh, uh, distribution via the web of, of the, the seven minute films of one dollar a day. But these are two other projects that we've been doing, looking at uh, trying to retrieve the, the lost archive which was lost during the Khmer Rouge period, the lost archive of Cambodian film and also basically media training, I would say. Um, exactly. And they've already produced two movies of seven minutes. Yeah. For, uh, the, the project started one year ago, and uh, they have produced two uh, prototype videos that they are now uh, they are published on the internet, and they are doing also a competition that started from the local network. They are saying they would like to work with film schools from Cambodia, but also to uh, connect themselves with the uh, wider, broader networks of film schools also to, to have other portraits. So it's starting from local, but it's going to an international competition. And the, 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 the open call will be uh, online till 2014. Yes, and they already have a media partnership with uh, Courier International. So yeah. can we uh, comment on it? I know Tanya's got some yeah. opinions, um, but Koyo, I, please start. I am, I am seriously disturbed by this project. <laughs> I mean, seriously, no, utterly you, disturbed because losing our opportunity because now. because <laughs> no, we can share <laughs> uh, because for at many levels. First of all, I think it's just a purely NGOistic language that they are using, which is for me to not part of the uh, you know creative language that uh, one would expect. Uh, on another level, I think that it's, uh, it's, it's so controversial, it's as controversial as Renzo Martin's project, uh, buying your own colony. You are advo I mean, you're engaging for people who live uh, with one, less than one dollar a day, but you get funding and you, you have uh, uh, um, absolute, I mean, what are you changing in their lives, you know, except for exposing them in a voyeuristic way, be it through film. You know, so I, I really, I really, really, really have a problem to that. I wouldn't want this project to win any one dollar. So, um, Ta Tanya, I do want to bring you in to give you a chance. Uh, no, I mean we should also demolish things. It's good. So, uh, no, I'm very happy that you have a more articulate and nice way to say things than I do. So, very nice elegant. <laughs> that was very elegant. You haven't seen me yet talking about a project I don't like. No, I think I totally go with you. I think there is uh, a dangerous... Um, this is uh, one example of something that could become dangerous in this practice, where people who are not the, benefit, the direct beneficiary of the project, um, the direct beneficiary of the project are not the people who should be benefiting of the project, and projects that give happiness to the wrong people. And I think uh, this is um, kind of a good alert of what can happen with social engaged art when neoliberal people or rich people or people who want to feel good about other places uh, do quick projects that are awareness campaigns that really don't touch people's life and change anything. So I think I'm, uh, yeah, 
But, but if we, I mean, I'm being devil's advocate here, but, but if we think about impact, which was one of the criteria, and effectiveness, I, I can speculate this project would have a substantial impact on the media. Come on, you have 25,000 euros. On the media for whom? Will that, exactly. uh, will that I mean, will that uh, raise <laughs> the, uh, the income of these people? No, I don't think so. You know, they will make them maybe famous, some kind of, we are, we are invited to gawk into their lives, you know, which I think it's really not, it's disrespectful, first of uh, all. Can I just add a thing, because we have to uh, give other materials. The first movie they did, The Minister of Papaya, and of course they only worked on Cambodia so far, but they, the idea of poverty is a transnational one, so they want, uh, you know, people living in, uh, in the first world to have this kind of portrait being made. But the thing is that, for example, it's interesting how the first video they made, it's like six months ago, and now they've been talking with this person because they live in the same city, and now, thanks to the video, he's earning much more than he used to earn because of the popularity gained. So. I mean, just to give you the element, because if you, you made a direct question, and the direct question is, yes, now he's earning more than one dollar a day. Uh, uh, can you think that it's uh, possible, interesting to see uh, how these people uh, can uh, do with one dollar a day to, to be informed to, through these this films and, and, and find, probably somebody else can find a way to say, okay, this is a, kind, a good instruction for the changing of the things, because it would be nice any, anyway to know more and to, to see how, uh, starting from this basic, uh, basic necessity, people can re restart and go on and, and produce a change. It's not, not, <clears throat> not related, probably, by my interest is not just related with the film that somebody will do it, but for the phenomenon, I think how, how the phenomenon, phenomenon can be uh, brought to, 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 to an, an understanding and becoming an example of possibilities. But I think one, one of the questions might be... Uh, can, can we see a piece of a video, the first video, so we don't, I, I don't judge know. by... If, uh, it's, if it's possible to do that, no? yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I would like say in, 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 in regard, one of, the, one of the issues might be that, that this if it could generate a feeling of solidarity amongst people that are on this level of income, that it might achieve something. Again, I'm, I, I have to admit huge doubts to this project, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's maybe quite an easy one to attack. It, you know, if you think about the proletariat, you think so about the raising the of the consciousness of the proletariat. That? Because of, but that's why, a little bit, because I'm, I'm talking about these, these two things. One, it seemed to be the one that was the most media friendly, except perhaps for the Christ, the king of the bling. And, um, and also that it was, um, that, that, that it had a certain potential, even though it was problematic, it had a certain potential to articulate a class which does not exist. And I think in, in, in my sort of uh, post-Marxist head, that, that was appealing. Yeah. Charles, could I, could I just, before we play the video, yeah. one thing that I remember noting from the video, which we'll see now, is that there's a slight funny little logo that appears in one of the, one of the screenshots. We'll, I, I think you'll all notice it now. Maybe we look. This, this is a different film, though. This is. A, oh, this, this is not the film this, we no, saw. This then. is the. Se this is. Uh, uh, oh, the one a they made already. Of okay. The oh, then I'll film. Say it. I guess the the Minister of Papaya. No. This yeah. is the, the one no, shot it, in. Yeah. In the one they made. You, you, the promotional video. Maybe thing. afterwards you can explain the logo. Go on. Okay. Go on. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, they had this screenshot of how how it'll go online, and then they had this icon of a computer screen, and it was an Apple, an iMac computer, which I find very ironic if you want to talk about people who earn one dollar a day or less that you use that kind of Probably imagery in your self-promotion. Yeah. yeah, fair point. Let's go on.
mau rồi mau đã rồi nên đua bốn sao cái mò đã mòn nhà anh mùi mòn ấy mòn bao hết mới nó sọc lắm mòn chuẩn lắm ở mai ở ấy sọc bảy à sọc là tọt lắng tu à hè mà mình cãi cà cho một sông của anh sẽ nơi mà dễ nè chọn rồi càng như thế nên bình nhất à chẳng bữa nào mà anh có nấu cho nữa thì khó được khi à ở phần tai ai mới có một tụp anh việc pi mai buồn chung thế nè ai mà chua nó miên một buồn một tụp nè bán này vô tạ được tụp nó ngâu à canh vải thì lộ mắm mày hay là vải tai chua này lo nữa bố à nắng ấy thì lộ mắm mày lại sai vậy anh ta anh khôn chân bây anh mới đăng nghe nè khá cái thang anh chú cút nè khá cái thang anh lọp lọp nè khá cái thang anh phơ phơ chân á nè khá thiết cái thang anh cận khốp tức khốp khai á anh mới nè khá cái thang anh nhấn bẹ cái áo của bắt con rồi rồi anh trai mang vào hông á anh nè thang với ba là thang á cái đại loại lôi anh mà cạn mà xén chai nè co mà phong mà khọt là xí bom mình không phần luôn anh mẹ na chui trong phun côn ấy, cứ ba là tha, chẳng ai bảo khom luôn ấy. mưa hay mưa, xóm bị rọn tây cái tha, mẹ nó. xóm ai? đây mà không ai, bạn đang muốn, ô tô hả? có rồi, từ ruột nó. ấy, mò, ruột. ยาโคลิตจอมสะอาดนะผมตัวใบยีไอไอหน้าช่วยอับปรำไพรอย่างนั้นใช่ฮะพอไงเตะเตียนไปเชียร์เพลย์เพียบก็ได้ซาเวีย
the relationship between a home and a centre, something very private and then something public, and therefore the project is taking something from the private sphere and transferring it to the public sphere. And it's also um, activating a visibility of gendered labour and aestheticising that activity and that history. So it's operating at a number of levels. It's bringing into the city's popular imaginary something that was gendered and domesticated and private and making that public and cultural and stronger. And at the same time, it's elevating this popular image globally of Palestine into a... Uh, in, in other words, it's subverting and flipping a, a populist, negative, stigmatic image that we have of, of Palestine into a really quite tender and uh, open and much more inclusive kind of space. And I find this is a sort of producing what I call ecologies for productive belonging, where people um, artic create a centre where they also feel a sense of belonging, but in the process of belonging, it's not just a subjective and symbolic activity, it's also a very productive and economic activity. And I find that deeply interesting. And I think a very, very um, significant um, st uh, statement. And beautiful as well. Can I just um, say a word? Because in the issue of disclosing our um, connections or knowledge to the project, uh, Beatrice is a former resident of the University of Ideas of Città dell'Arte. And uh, Baital Karama, uh, is uh, we can consider one of we call them the one working site of transformation in a geography of transformation that we see and foster and promote. So there is this connection that is I think it's important that we disclose. Yeah, and I think in one one thing I, I know the project uh, also uh, well, and and I think what is interesting about it that this is a project that is sort of like um, self-initiated that is sort of with a group of people that sort of like kept continuing it and they find a way to, to keep uh, evolving it into what they, they think they need. So from doing maybe some very formal presentations outside to really working with the group on a new idea of what a community center could look like there. And I think that's sort of like, that, that to me is interesting. Because of course, I mean, we all, at some point, work with food and with cooking, and I mean, it's very popular, but there it, 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 it also served really a true understanding of a, a an em, em, mem, mem, I cannot pronounce the word. In, emancipatory. Emancipatory. Emancipating uh, in the fact that, that it was also about bringing uh, 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 something uh, into a more visible position and I think that's sort of like I, I thought is interesting but I, I think I also admire the stamina of it so. N Nikos maybe I can come back before you start Kyle. just just the question of translatability which you brought up quite strongly um, I mean some of us know the, the situation in Palestine relatively well and and certainly the lack of community facilities is one of the things that that is that strikes you very very quickly um, so in that sense, it's very important. But to what extent would this be a translatable, in, in your terms, would be a translatable activity? I mean, what, what I said earlier about this idea of um, ecologies of productive belonging, I, I think is enormously translatable. That is where you take something that's previously, as a form of labour that's done privately, but then you choose to do it collectively and publicly. And a lot of young people are doing this today now in many cities around the world, which is rather than working on their laptops at home doing design work or whatever, they choose to congregate in certain parts of the city centre where they have free Wi-Fi, which they probably can get at home as well, but they choose to work in a collaborative, collective environment because there's this pure desire for sociable space, to create sociable spaces. But at the same time, they also want to, to not just hang out and be in the company of other people, they also want to feel that this is a place of production as well. And I think this aestheticization of our everyday life is also an, a re-aestheticization of production as well. And this is what one of the elements that I find enormously interesting in these kinds of projects. 
Go ahead. Thanks. Well, I, I mean, this project sort of forces me to go back to what you said at some point, Nikos. Uh, Nikos is uh, instead of us asking, uh, is it art? we should go into what kind of art it is. And in asking that, what kind of art is it, I, I am compelled to ask, why is uh, Bayt al-Karama more interesting than any other women community center? Like, I mean, is it because the person who's initiating it or who's behind it is an artist? Or is my aunt who has her female group and uh, uh, empowering organization somewhere in the city of Douala mm -hmm. doesn't have the same exposure but doing the same work? Here specifically, uh, I'm a bit uh, challenge, challenge not in the understanding of uh, of uh, of the project, but rather in uh, in its location. And I'm not meaning Palestine or whatever, but in its location within the uh, within the territory of contemporary art. Yep. Okay. You know, that's. Uh, um, to me, I, I can't speak with any authority, but just on my brief impressions, so I'm speaking of impressions rather than knowledge here, but I get the impression that what makes it art is not the craft of making the food, right? And that's why I think the outcome isn't just the, the, the cookbook. The outcome is the process. And what's more interesting is, is to use Rick Tiravanija's phrase, it's the way you sculpt hospitality that makes it art. It's the way you shape the environment, the way in which you, through the congregation, create an aesthetic experience, a sensory awareness of possibilities. And I get the impression, maybe it's purely because of the photography, which I found quite attractive as well, I get the impression that it's not just a community drop-in centre, but it's something quite novel is also starting to emerge here. I'm not sure, it's just a susp it's intuition rather than knowledge. But, um, I mean, while I was uh, very satisfied with the video uh, more than other ones because uh, they were mostly the users who talk, mm. which I think was a very good point in presentation, I, I agree with Koyo, we again say what I want to say better, which is um, also the fact that I was thinking are we, um, are we predisposed as artists or people in culture to be more susceptible to projects in certain places than others? Uh, for example, the fact that we have certain fascinations or different expectations from places help us to appreciate more when it happens there. Because um, I know few projects like this uh, I can name some projects like this that happen in less, uh, um, less un unaccessible projects and less uh, politically imaginary pro places. And they have, you know, it's, it, and it had the same thing. Is this uh, ecology of friendship? Is this the, the, the book is not the end of something, but it's the beginning of something, you know? And at the same time, I feel like sometimes we are somehow fascinated when things happen in certain places. Maybe it's, it's, it's worthwhile just to read this out, and I know Matteo would be happy if I did. Um, with Beit al-Karama, uh, they created a common public space where three things happen at the same time, a common pool of resources and a place created and sustained by communities. The third and most important element is based on the verb too common, which I didn't know existed. Uh, so. The social process that creates and reproduces the commons. I mean, that in a way backs up some of the things that, that you're saying, I would, I would suggest, because it feels like the, the, the condition of community uh, is, is the one which is being called into, uh, into existence. And, and certainly within the Palestinian condition, this seems to be, uh, I mean, I, I think we, you know, from personal knowledge, I understand the, the significance of that. But whether that's something, we, I, I come back to this translatability. I'm not, I, I think you're reading quite far into it, that the, 
that that would be my concern that what we're being presented with here is is a is a coming together of a of particularly of a a, a a female community which is harder than a male community to come together and to gather um and which is excellent in its in its way but the extent to which it goes beyond that and maybe my question to Matteo would be also why a recipe book is there a reason why this would be the form of representation because we're talking very much about representation then yeah, the, the 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 outcome the money would be paid in order to represent a, a community and a commons which is created and then represented through this book yeah i can just quote and it says that the book is titled fatima's chronicles and fatima is the woman that speaks the most in the video and he says it's a choral narration of food taste and gestures as a further step to involve the local community in a process of awareness towards their own food heritage so the idea of keeping an heritage of food that maybe is not is disappearing to some extent i don't know and to actively engage with its preservation the recipe book will emerge from a multitude of voices from the community itself. So maybe they, they, they thought that the recipe book, because also they became a slow food uh, presidium, so I think that the, maybe the access also, you know, visible is about where art leaves its uh, own field and becomes visible as part of something else. Maybe also it's, it's also a way to take advantage of a, of a track you know, of uh, food culture, you know, interest around food, interest around the preserving uh, food heritage that they're trying to play in order to then allow a community to, to, to have a certain awareness through this path, just trying to interpret the elements. I, I want to say something that has nothing to do exactly with the project. It's just a comment apropos of all the projects we have seen so far. And it's something I feel like it's a little bit of tendency when we talk about social engaged art. I'm really craving for social engaged art who work with the rich people and the people with no <laughs> needs. You know, because I'm kind of feeling that sometimes it's very easy to do social engaged art with the people in Palestine, or the people who are one dollar a day, or the people who are really the suffering people, or the people who are very easy to, you know what I mean? So I feel like while I agree, and I'm also one of the people working with immigrants, so I'm also part of that, um, I think the approach should be a little different. Uh, and uh, again, I, maybe my next project is working with the Queen of Holland or something, <laughs> you know? Uh, I mean, to, to uh I mean, it's an analogy to what Tanya is saying. Uh, something that, that sort of also is problematic for me is uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an African woman, I mean, with the history and uh, I don't want to get into that, I'm utterly disturbed all the time when Western women come to advocate for, you know, I mean, uh, for other women as if... Uh, these others could not speak for themselves. So, and, and that's why I actually, I mean, uh, there are a lot of, uh, um, how do you say, underserved uh, women in difficulties in Italy, in France, in anywhere else. Why don't, you, don't we see these kind of projects, but we see them in Cambodia, we see them in Palestine, we see them in Senegal or wherever. That's and true, but... but but that's you know, true. We, but we should be essentialist about we it. No, it shouldn't no, be. No, that you, no, no, we, need, we need to find a balance between those two because no, I, also I, the I users think, did speak in this video. Yeah, yeah. I think to, 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 it was it was only the users. She didn't. No, voice. I I just the, wanted to interrupt the, the that I didn't, didn't find that didn't, a fair yeah. a fair yeah. comment to Beatrice because she's she's honestly living there. You can also live and work in places that you might be not not necessarily born. And I think um, um, I think there's something else happening there which I find interesting in the pro in the project it's not just about the slow food and the cooking and the heritage of food but it, this is a, a way or a vehicle or a tool to actually create a center where women uh, become public and speak up public and take public position and that at that moment in time uh, there is a very important gesture and that is a slow process which goes with a lot of trust and a lot of care uh, about people slowly coming through the door, maybe to cut the tomato, but then stay longer and get more actively involved. And I think in that sense, it is, it is a project that at least tries to create a modality 
about how in, in a situation of pressure generate a trustworthy situation in which things can become public again and I, I would not underestimate that. I, I totally, I mean, I see that. And what that's that, not a privilege for somebody that's born there. You or know, something. I mean, I think, I really think that it's, in, I mean, uh, so why don't she, I would, I, would, I would, for instance, appreciate if she would sign the project with the names of all the other women, mm. not only her name. For instance, you know what I mean? That's exactly what See, I'm talking about. You know? It's our fault. That's yeah. their fault, I think. It's our fault because we want to have a, a name, a representative name. We put a name, but the okay. project was submitted by Baita Al Karama. So it's not just Beatrice. Just, but then she's the artist, so we decide. I mean, I, mean, I, mean I, think it, I think it's a valid comment, but I think we need to be careful about being essentialist, where we say that people should only work in where they're born and things like that. We no, need to achieve that. No, it's not about that. No, no, it's not about that. It's about, it's about, it's, it's, not, it's more about, wie sagt man bevormundung? Bevormundung. Bevormundung, supporting. Not supporting, it's anyway, it's staying in the place of, in lieu of, or, okay. you know. In terms of uh, your German, not I know, but I don't. Bevormundung. 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 Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, no, I think if so, I mean, when my comment was not so specific <coughs> about that project, it was in general about a tendency on social engaged art. Yeah. Uh, which I want to make this distinction. Secondly, I do understand when somebody coming from outside can detonate potentialities that people in the place cannot have. But it's more the process of how can you transfer that potentiality to the people there at some point and not staying capitalizing that potentiality for yourself. That's exactly and in what this I'm case, you have explained that she's not doing that. So it's good to know. Yeah, I think, I think that's true. Yeah, there's a comment from uh, Daphne and from, and from Gabby. Maybe Gabby first, do you have the mic? Yeah, Gabby. Um, uh, first of all, um, I, um, I speak as a witness because uh, I went to Nablus to visit uh, together, I went together to, with uh, Beatrice Catanzaro and I have to say first of all that uh, she mentions all the time that she's doing the project, to, project together with uh, Fatima Kadumi. Um, so, um, in fact, she is, uh, all the time, she's uh, saying this. Uh, Fatima Kadumi has uh, a lot of difficulties in traveling for several reasons. Uh, one is that uh, uh, she's Palis Palestinian, this makes it very difficult. The second is that she's a woman. And uh, in Nablus, uh, women uh, still live in a situation that is not very uh, easy, uh, of uh, kind of separation. Uh, so she did travel, they did travel together. Um, Fatima came, for instance, to Italy, uh, but it was very difficult, and not only for political reasons, also for uh, personal, familiar reasons. So, uh, of course, uh, Beatrice is still uh, kind of um, bringing the flag of this project, but it's easier for her than to Fatima, uh, for Fatima. Um, and uh, another thing that I would like to say is that the project um, uh, started in a very natural way, uh, is a long term, uh, she has been working for some years, uh, already, um, uh, in a very natural way, it, way it really started from a uh, from a friendship. <coughs> um, so, um, uh, and it's really a project about uh, livability, the possibility to live in a situation of a very uh, strong um, um, pressure. Uh, the pressure is huge, and again, it's a pressure that comes from different, uh, that has different um, reasons. Uh, energies are uh, compressed, and women's energies are even more uh, compressed. And I think that uh, this project is really kind of a paradigm. In this sense, it can be considered uh, really an art project, uh, because this idea that in a place that is very compressed, uh, you can uh, begin from the simplest thing, that is food, food, just because food is what they, this uh, Fatima, uh, for instance, and or most women do almost all the time. They really can't go beyond Nablus, um, 
um, borders, and I really mean Nablus, uh, not uh, Palestine. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this is what they deal with uh, almost all the time. So making, uh, b uh, transforming food in a, an opportunity uh, to meet and to uh, have a more uh, active and public role, and this uh, home, center or home uh, will be a home uh, um, uh, organized uh, by women, created by women, organized uh, uh, um, uh, and managed by women, but also for men, open for, to men also. So I think this is really a, a shape, a form uh, and a paradigm. In this sense, this has a, a broader uh, sense. Uh, so this was only uh, like... No, thank you very uh, much, Gabby. Are there any other okay. comments? We, I, I want to just make a comment on time. Daphne, do you want to speak anymore? Basically, basically the same thing I was going to say, because is this really an artist-initiated project, or is it because of the flexibility of the award that it is submitted as an artist project? Because there is actually local charity around the mosque that supports the food cookery school. There is an existing network that has been already initiated. And yes, an Italian artist and a yes, a London-based cultural manager come and give it extra management or extra visibility or extra distribution to the rest of the world. So in that sense, is it really artist initiated? I don't really know. <coughs> that was one thing. And the other thing is, back to what Tanya said, I mean, there's something about not, I mean, it's so easy to be seduced because it is Palestine. And you look at the video and you think, wow, like everything that is destroyed in Syria, in Damascus, in Aleppo, like you see it in Nablus still alive with the f soap factories and food and all those elements. So you kind of get that sweet spot, like, okay, this needs to be cultivated. You know, maybe the award gives it the next three, four years for that productive belonging to be even more. Uh, multiplied. So in that sense, there is something very genuine, and I think as far as I watched, I missed the morning, but it's the only uh, video in its authentic language yeah, it presented, is. Yeah, which was also English. lovely. We talked about that, actually. That's, uh, that's true. Um, <coughs> Beatrice lives there, absolutely. I hear that, and I actually disagree with Koyo. I mean, the foreigners have a lot of enabling power wherever they go. They connect the locals that to locals more profoundly sometimes than the local themselves. The same way, you know, I, I way, way back in the 80s, he got so much cushioning and sheltering either by being abroad or by being with people who were from abroad that he, I mean, of course, he has other powers that are behind him and supporting him. But I mean, I think it's very unfair to just say foreign woman lost doing soul searching in abroad, trying to enable a community because then, then you really lose all the essence of all the foreign workers in their respective contexts, what they are doing. I mean, very often seen, as much as the cliche about a location which is seductive, you know, like under, I mean, troubled locations. So it's basically, it's an analogy. And uh, uh, I absolutely, I mean, I, if I we take it personally, I live as a foreigner myself, but I just, I just think that it's a, it's a recurrent pattern that comes a lot and that is disturbing to me, which I think. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it short because we're already 20 minutes over and we're only halfway through the, the uh, meetings. Um, what I would uh, actually, actually propose is that, is that we try and go on through these discussions if, if it gets, because uh, I don't really want to rush them, this is the core of the, of the activity. Um, I think there's going to be some coffee outside quite soon, it's might even there. So if people would like to go and get coffee while we continue the discussion, I, I, I propose that we work through through uh, through the the break and Michelangelo's already being a good we've still got five to go through so we're halfway through so I think people can can we won't take it rudely if people wander off and get coffee but if you don't stay of course you won't get a vote um, the next can, project can I say something very quickly it's one line I promise one line about what you say about the 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 person who is foreigner my problem with it is not that somebody can go because I'm from Cuba and many people have come from outside and helped me to do stuff but is the reciprocity of that uh, situation. When you go to another place as a foreigner, then you cannot. If you come from these kind of countries, you don't have the same access. 
to, to this power and to change anything or to comment on that culture. So I think for me the problem is not about people going there, it's about how can we establish a global um, equality in this kind of relationship. No, I mean, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a topic that we can also return to um, many, many times in the, into the future. Um, if we can go to Fernando Garcia um, Dori's project, I'll, I'll do the reading of the quote first. Um, Garcia Dori is, uh, is also interested in a larger European context for reconsidering the rural, from the unequally distributed local effects of pan-European cultural and economic policies to the complex interrelations between tradition and contemporary experience. Um, so uh, this is a project, if you remember, that's set in, uh, in Puglia, uh, around uh, Foggia, which is uh, uh, an area that was initially uh, drained by the Mussolini government and settled, um, I think, from people outside of Puglia, no? from non-Pugliese. Non uh, and, uh, and then ran from the 60s onwards, basically has been in decline, and this is a question of how to revivify it. Um, any comments would be useful. One issue that I had, and I have to say I know Vessel and I'm on the board of Vessel, so I have a vested interest in this to a certain extent, which I'm happy to declare. But one question that I did have is, is to what extent is this an active project and to what extent is it something that, and I'm going to look at, uh, so to what extent is it an active project, to what extent is it a proposal? I think rather it is, it is still now, till now our proposal, they made a research in the, in the area, but uh, they were also indicating that uh, this project would be part of a bigger um, network because uh, Fernando was uh, initiating a project already in, uh, in Spain and uh, is uh, actually working in Sweden and they would co connect this uh, proposition to the, this broader project inland. But in, uh, in reality, they are in a research phase. So it's rather a project that would be started. So the question of viability or sustainability might be one that we would... Uh, yeah, just an information, the project is also supported by, uh, started by Marco De Gaetano, that is an architect that started the idea, then shared it with Vessel, and then Vessel invited Fernando to develop because of this inland lar larger project. So. Nikos. Uh, can I comment on it now? Please. Um, I've, I find this a project that's enormously interesting at the end of what it's proposing when it talks about the post office because that's another example of what I was saying earlier about here is a public asset that is in a state of abandonment and we haven't found an alternative that's relevant to our contemporary contexts. So here is a project that points to a very, very hot spot in our contemporary life. But the majority of the video is about the background of the environment. And it strikes me that it says more about the history, historical background of the problem and the issues and the context than it actually says about a possible project that can be developed within this very interesting location. And I see this problem all the time in the academic world when people propose projects but they're talking to you about what they want to talk about rather than explaining the thing that they want to do and the method with which they will do it and the value of which it has. So what's lacking for me in this project is in fact its methodology and its description of what it is that is urgent about it. But it, and it, uh, uh, it obscures those two very important parts by talking and presenting a lot about the background rather than the topic or the methodology that's central to the foreground, that should be in the foreground. So there's a bit of a weakness, I think, to this one. Are there any uh, comments in of the remaining jury members? Is there, is there anybody who'd like to comment about it further, um, either to back up Nikos's analysis or to... I want Oppose to be offended. I mean, I, I, um, I think this is part of the disadvantage of having a prize uh, situation or a war situation where there are pre projects already developed and projects that are really in a very early stage. And I think that's a kind of disadvantage for some of the inequality we have here. And I think, unfortunately, um, 
yeah, this happening, this project, we're in another kind of context, we will be very excited about. But because we've seen projects that already exist for a long time and so on, it's kind of... But in another way, I know Fernando's work, he's uh, part of the Arte Util exhibition, and I know the capacity um, he has as an artist to really come up with something extremely different and extremely surprising and at the same time very knowledgeable and very unique and very creative. Um, that's all I can say, but of course it's a project very uh, information. So. In two years' time, in two years' time, he can apply again. No, because I, f I feel this this one to me is, is too uh, premature to even look at it because it's a lot of like sort of like possibilities and a first initial research, and I I can not say anything about where it's going, like what kind of thing it will actually precisely address or even how it will be continued or what will be the methodologies or even what will be its primarily focus and I mean I, I like his his work as well so that's not a problem but I think this yeah is just too early yeah no I think I mean I think there's a relative consensus I think I think one of I mean to, to generalize it a little bit the one of the the criteria that we spoke about well, not necessarily criteria one of the the strong evidences, I think, in Arte Util and something that we strive towards was the idea of the proposition. It's very easy and much art is, uh, works at the level of the critical, of criticality, of, of trying to point out a problem of, you know, if you like, pointing the finger. But what I think distinguishes the art that we're looking at is that it's also propositional. Of course, critique is a necessary beginning, but it, if it's the end, then it's, then it's not. And I think this project has that potential probably I think we're all saying, but it's not, it's not formulated in a way that we can judge it at this stage. Yeah, one, has somebody got a microphone? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I talk just because I studied the area, so uh, maybe I have some uh, further information about the context, and I understand the doubts about the historical uh, dominance of the perspective, but the point is that uh, um, history of this place is so, so peculiar that uh, um, is very relevant to the project and it shows how deep is the research that Marco De Gaetano is doing is three years he um, uh, goes in these villages almost every week and uh, talk to the people and try to understand uh, how to improve this context. And um, the problem is that due to the fact that <clears throat> was an artificial rural space. Uh, people abandoned the place. And so they suffer about kind of um, lack of infrastructures and lack of, total lack of representants. So uh, I think that the project is searching for ways to merge together uh, local people and migrants who are a consistent part of the social texture to find a way to let uh, to improve the common awareness of the fact that they are in the same political body to uh, fight for their representants representants uh, to the political institutions. So the network and the radio are two outcomes that can be um, really practical in these terms, because they want to create a council, the video says, and uh, um, everybody there um, complains about the fact that there is no any more council uh, to the local institutions and with uh, um, a very local perspective. So this is the kind of... No, outcome. thanks. That was really helpful, I think, to give us another, another angle on it. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead to the next project, unless there's any other... Come on, yes, one from, can you, can we get the knife, uh, Paolo, can we get the knife, can we get the <laughs> microphone? I'm just slightly, um, first of all, I, I was a bit disappointed because I really like this artist uh, and I was looking forward to see the presentation, but then I'm a bit shocked that there is consensus that it's too premature. Why is it selected from 
uh, nearly 80 projects to be brought to the fore and then I think I mean I mean I have to, I have to say it's the one that I least remember being selected I have to admit the conversations are the ones that I can least recall which I don't know whether it says something about it uh, when you're sele when you're selecting things there are a, there are certain dynamics which exist within a group which allow these things to happen um, but I also think that it that it has a lot of potential and I think you know it, as the one of the pre-selectors I would defend it on the fact that 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 also the the research has happened as you said um, but also that it feels like it's 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 addressing a very particular problem which which uh, which it felt capable of doing so they felt when we thought about the question of, of, of uh, actualizing and sustainability even though it is a proposal and it feels more like a proposal now than it did at the time I think but also that it that it that it feels uh, that it feels that it can be actualized and knowing the groups knowing not only Fernando but also vessel then there's a certain amount of trust in that which which I think probably helps to push it over the line yeah. but, uh, maybe this is another moment to uh, take advantage of the conversation to say that maybe in terms of the price, uh, this idea of uh, favorite uh, authorship over collaborative is a problem. Because here we are looking the name of Fernando, uh, but also Island Vessel, which looks like institutional support, where they are actually collaborators. And uh, I think uh, we have seen this across several projects, you know? And I think maybe for next year it's something to think. Do we, you want to favorite the authorship of one artist and maybe have no full responsibility of the project, but it's one more element in the creative process? And so on. So. Yeah, which goes back to Beatrice also an extent to which that is an artist-initiated project or it's a, an artist working together with a project that already existed. Yeah. Um, okay, the next project is... Yes, thank you very much. Uh, in Cagnisso, which is uh, Zanelli Moholi, is, uh, is now the name associated with this. Um, and this is a project which, uh, as you know, I think proposes to make a film, uh, a film of 120 minutes or so, I think she said, uh, recording the lives of some 20 uh, uh, black lesbian South African women, obviously, black lesbian South Africans, um, that, uh, and, and their, their um, situation as uh, a, a minority that suffers hate crimes and suffers the, the gender politics of, of, uh, of South Africa. Um, I'll read the statement out. Uh, Incaniso is a groundbreaking platform driven by a legitimate claim for human rights for all. It also stands as a possible model for other creative activist groups on the African continent where most LGBTI individuals cannot be open about their sexuality for fear of their own safety. Um, maybe I can start with Koyo here, not only because you're African, not only because you're African, I was just gonna say that, but because we talked about this before, and so we had a conversation, and I thought it would be uh, interesting to get your point of view because I think it's quite clear. I think it has evolved since lunch, no? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, mm, that's a tough one now. You were very good before. <laughs> um, I'm less inspired now, maybe. No, uh, I, I just think that, uh, I don't know, I think we, we have to be very clear. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting to that. We have to be very, very clear uh, in terms of uh, where are the limits of activism and uh, where activism begins. In, uh, and uh, in this specific context, I mean, in this specific uh, proposal, um, I'm, I'm really not... And I don't think that uh, a film is like the most appropriate tool for the kind of process that we look, uh, we look at or we, we want to see in a, in a socially engaged artistic practice. And uh, this is one. And and it also it also has this element of autonomy that also for me speaks against the idea of community and collaborative. I mean, it will be as Anele Muholi's film, 
certainly on a very uh, important topic, but it has this authorship that I have a problem with somehow when it comes to, you know, uh, 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 engaged uh, social justice. And so I just think that it has to be, it goes beyond one person. It has to go beyond one person. And, uh, um, and on, the, on the other level is, uh, is also what kind of art is it? You know, I mean, it will be a platform. I mean, the topic that Zanella is dealing with is absolutely serious. And as a photographer, she has she has uh, 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 played it out in a, in a very very good way. Um, I've, I'm following her work very closely. Actually, I'm showing her in uh, in April in Dakar. But I really think that uh, it's. Uh, making this film to set up a platform and to raise awareness for the situation of, uh, of, um, of uh, black lesbians in South Africa. I miss the voices of all these other black lesbians in that proposal. I miss their voices. All, the only voice I hear is Anneli's voice, which is talking for the others. I really miss the involvement of all these others. And I also miss a kind of, uh, uh, be it a communal space, be it virtual or, you know, somewhere there where there is interaction, you know, and an interaction that goes beyond uh, an end product of a, of a film, an interaction that is that is that is uh, 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 continuous, and I know they do it, but she's not showing it. But so, I mean, in the movie, it shows just for a second the screenshot mm -hmm. because when we received the proposal, we were also wondering: is it Zanelli? Is it uh, this platform called Incanisio? And we've been following the blog Incanisio, and they have a new post almost every day written by different people. So the, in the blog, you, you really perceive this community. And in the video, it's also nice to see, for example, how when she speaks with one of the writers, like you know. Uh, pushing her, like, write the second part of this, it was so good, do it that way. Like, really, so there is this online platform, and you, from what she says, the video will will represent 20, at least, of these people that animate the Incanizio platform. And just one thing, I know maybe I shouldn't, but speaking about the criteria, another criteria that hasn't emerged, and maybe here speaks out loud, is the criteria of urgency. So, shall we consider that or not? Yeah, okay. yeah. This is, uh, this is, yeah, this is excellent because, for example, this is um, the only project that when I saw, I really thought this price can be very good for the project beyond the idea of production. Because, yeah, she can probably have more money for a film from other sources. But in terms of the idea of visibility and support, and, and, and uh, using the prize or the award as a way that person uh, feeling supported and showing other people they are not alone and not only doing this from this kind of underground situation. So. Maybe what could be interesting also to add is also this wish uh, to, of distribution of the film because what it's interesting also that it's uh, in a certain way going out also of the art field because she, they are looking to, to, to show the film in the, in the community, for, of course, well, first of all, but also they would like to distribute it in, in, in festivals and, um, and make the, the, the film really circ circulate also through the web, website. So that could be also interesting they wish really that this film is going yeah. around. Something I just wanted to add very quickly also is also that um, I, I definitely think that it's absolutely important to, to deal with that, to talk about it, to have multiple tools and uh, platforms uh, to, uh, to engage with that. But uh, the perspective that Zanelli is using here is, is still a perspective of a of a stigma, and we, I, I miss the empowering, I miss the, you know, uh, 
uh, we are fighting it. We are, you know, we are we are getting over it. We do, this is and this is what we are doing to do so. It's it's a it's a categorization of uh, of uh, look how bad it is, and it doesn't go beyond that that uh, kind of premise. And I think that is that is a. Uh, that is pro problematic. I mean, I mean, to be fair, she, she addresses that by saying rather, um, while the common thread through their stories will be the experience of hate crimes, this will not be the focus of the films. Rather, the films will explore the complexity, struggles, and beauty, even the ordinariness, the normalness of their lives. While which, moving beyond in incidents of violence and abuse is, as with many women, a challenging part of life. So I mean, I, th I, mean, I think there's an element where she's trying to address that. The, the qu maybe I, I could ask, you to compare it with Bopana for a moment to see whether that that uh, relationship is one that pulls yeah with the one dollar thing which, whether it pulls these uh, the strands of this project out would anybody else like to comment on that yeah I mean my impression of her work is that she also tries to nuance a little bit the sensuality factor but I agree there is the component of a focus of the rape and the underrepresented black lesbian community of South Africa. But she is pushing the sensuality button. That's my impression of her work. And also, she just this week received the Prince Klaus Fund Laureate Award for you to know. And her show is up in Amsterdam for. She is, uh, she is one of the winners, and she, the, her show is up at the Prince Klaus Fund Gallery in Amsterdam for anybody who's interested. It's a side note. No, the little ones, one of the little ones. A, and she is pretty actually in the very, she is very prominent in the censorship circle. And I mean, she has quite a lot of visibility abroad. I don't think that should be detrimental to your decision, but I just... I mean, it, there's, an interesting, there's an interesting quote here, which, says, uh, which is from a tweet, which is by how many people out there are making films about black lesbians in South Africa. Representation is still important. Yeah. And I think this question of representation in relation to social engagement yeah. is one I find quite uh, 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 problematic. Maybe in the, the, I'm not specifically referring to this case, but I think that representation, which is the, the classic uh, uh, methodology in which art might, might politicize itself, is not really the one that's social engagement, uh, engagement stands for. But I, I have to say that at the same time, I'm not for, can you hear me? No. I'm not, you know, Charles, I'm not for images and imaginary representation, but at the same time, uh, uh, at the same time, I feel that by creating these images of intimate moment between two women from Africa, and all, that creates really uncomfortable situation that is really political. It's one of the few projects where I see the actual image working politically. Because she's creating an acervo, how you say in English, like an, an archive uh, or a, you know, a, a register of images that not exist out there and people cannot ignore. And they are working politically. But, but I come, again, again I, I totally agree, and I think it's an incredibly important project, but how would we, the, the, is it, the proposition of the film and, and the mention of human rights also brings me back to the sort of NGO language, which we also encountered in Bapana. And that's something that you talked about, the NGO, the question of, of, uh, of NGO expression, which is, of course, generally about representation. You're representing the poor through the rich, to put it very crudely. And that notion of representation, I'm not sure, however worthy that is and necessary, whether that's something we can include within the compass of, of our arte util social engagement uh, 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 filter. Actually, when I see that, when I see that image, it makes me think of Mapper, Mappertorf, how you call it? Mapper, Mapper, you know, like this guy. Um, and I, I don't know, is is you know, I understand that maybe film is not the 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 kind of um, way in which language we want to find for this social engaged art. But at the same time, I mean, we haven't seen the film; we don't have the script. No. And that's good to know. But also, in actually the Arte Conducta, the Arte Util show, we arrived to a conclusion that the best way to document these projects were through um, some sort of narrative filming situation because you have the emotional side, you have the story, you have the news, you have all these components of the experience. I don't know, I feel very hard to judge a film without knowing what's going to be in the film and without having an idea of the script of the film and the impact that film can have. Because sometimes one film can change more something in society than 300 exhibitions. 
absolutely, very true, and, and worth retaining. Are there any more comments from the public on this project? Yes. She made already other movies. I'm not sure we've got time to have a look at it, though, Andrea. I'm sorry. No, I, I think. Uh, any more comments? Yeah, sorry, Shana. No, I saw the, also the other movie on the on the internet. Um, I think her, I didn't know the work very well, I, and I saw that she was a Prince Klaus laureate as well. But I mean, it is the urgency is 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 there, and she's capable of making very moving images, and in one way or another, and that's something that we should, yeah, I think sometimes also not forget about. Yeah, that that's important, that images can still move. That not every, every, th every image is representation, but can also be moving. Okay. We have three more, I think, which will cause some discussion. So I'm gonna move on, unless there are any more comments. Paolo, do you want to? If I, if I may, um, I will, I'm, I'm reflecting on, the, on this issue of um, porno misery, which is something that I got uh, familiar with recently, and actually just thanks to uh, Elena Produciones and uh, Cali and Colombia um, acquaintance. Uh, the, it has been kind of brought up today as well when we were uh, discussing about uh, the Beatrice Catanzaro's project uh, or the One Dollar project. And it doesn't come into at all into the discussion now that we're talking uh, of uh, in Cainizio. And uh, possibly, I wonder, is it because she is uh, as, as herself uh, the part of the uh, subject that is on the other side of the camera? Uh, and if, if, if it is so, are we saying that uh, social practice uh, is only ethically uh, possible if the ones who make it are uh, the, also the subjects for... No. no, no, no. no? Please. Not at all. And uh, I think what happened here that we don't see in the other ones and the, and the concept of porno miseria is one in which it is a, a image generated so the person who is not part of that condition feels good because they are not in that situation, you know? In this case, this woman is creating images that are very hard for us to avoid. And they're putting us in a very complicated political position. Because, yes, we are leftists, we have to agree with all this, uh, but it's not easy to see, you know? So it's different than pornomiseria because pornomiseria, I feel, has this kind of detachment of the experience that you have as a viewer, not only the person producing it, but also it has this kind of, uh, yeah, as you say, cynicism, you know? And in this case, it's an empowering process for the person generating the image, not the artist, but the person who is in the image. And I think that's a big difference for me. And I, I didn't know she was a Prince Klaus, I swear. I just knew that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think that should be relevant. I think uh, you know, the more money people get, the better in some cases. Um, yeah, Eduardo. Um, I'd, I'd just like to mention it's quite, it can be quite easy to see the, the project and to imagine that it's just about a black lesbian woman. But Black lesbian women in South Africa, I'm from South Africa, as a topic really cuts so deeply into all the political, racial, and gender issues that are present in South Africa. So I think also I, I, maybe I need to add into that, that really this cuts so deeply into the current issues that South Africa is, is going through that I think especially for that, it, it breaks out completely from just being a film about black lesbian women. It, it really deals with many other topics, I think. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's really useful, and, and thanks for those comments. I think they, they're, they're changing our, our hierarchies of, uh, of proposals as, as we speak, I think. Um, so I have no idea what the top three will be. We've got three left, so maybe they'll be the ones. Um, <laughs> The Silent University by uh, Ahmed uh, Oyed. Um, Ahmed has been working on this project for some time. It started in, in the most representative institution possible, the Tate Modern in London, uh, but nevertheless was a participative project. Um, and, uh, and has moved on now to Tensta, uh, Tensta Constal in, uh, in Stockholm. 
Um, it consists of, um, as I think you all understood, uh, um, asylum seekers, uh, people who are not yet legalized or may never be legalized, may be thrown out, uh, the knowledge that they have being, being uh, offered um, to other immigrants and also to, to uh, the general public. Uh, through the mechanism of the silent university. I think the proposal is to set up a website in no. which... No. Okay, you can tell me better. The website is already on and working. The proposal is basically to get more funding to let the London and uh, Stockholm, uh, uh, let's say, um, branch uh, more operative and more stable. And then also to initiate, introduce and activate the, the Berlin and Paris one. So to implement the already existing ones and to, and to uh, open uh, to other places with the silent university. So, the so then the 25,000 would be a contribution. It wouldn't in, in it of its own be able to, yes. to realize this. Yes, this, it would be but, a yeah, but if we might say that we, uh, I know that by the further explanation it is that the Paris one in Montreuil, so in Banlieue, mm -hmm. is, uh, would be the one that would receive the most contribution because it's the one that is in its actual activation phase. Yes, so in terms of timing of the calendar of the project. So this is a project which, which has a signature of an artist quite firmly behind it. Um, so maybe we can start with, uh, with the question of community that we talked about and, uh, and how, this, uh, how this relates to um, those questions of authorship. If well, you would like. Um, I like your I'd like, I'd hate to disagree with you, Charles, but very, it's, it's, very good. it's like got, it's got, it might have the signature of an artist on it, but it, it really speaks to a global need. And in that sense, it's way beyond any individual or even any particular community. And this is the one project that for me has sustainability and translatability written all over it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so the most impressive aspect for me is the fact that this is a project that could be in every major city in the world right now. And it's imminently transferable because there are, in every country, there are people who are dentists in one country and a taxi driver in another, that are nurses in their home country, but, you know, cleaners, cleaners in another. And these are human resources that are being wasted on a colossal scale all over the world. And I understand the need of calibration, but I also marvel at the wonderful way in which this proposal has been already developed. So it's speaking to a social need, but then to call itself the silent university is an incredibly resonant, you know, it's echoing thunderously about the violence of wasting people's capacities. And in that way, I think it is it sort of makes your hair stand up when, when you think of it in those terms. And so it is a sensory project. You know, it is making you think about the worlds that must exist inside certain people's mental skills. And then the worlds that develop as they start to transfer them in informal neck mechanisms. And sure, these people aren't trying to say, well, we'll create a university of validation, therefore, but a university of, for the exchange of ideas. And that, I think, is, is a very beautiful thing. So, I think there is an idea to create an ID card and to actually have some formal, formalized uh, aspects in it which would allow the rights of a student to be conferred on, the, on people. But more than that ID card, what I think is, it's doing is prompting each society to think about the way in which it wants to use and work with and recognize the value of other human beings. Now, of course, there must be some process of evaluation. That's not to say that this is to be ignored, but it's to say, how do we in initiate that process of recognizing another person's worth and capacity? And, and, and that's a fundamentally social and human thing, but in this instance, it's doing that in an interesting and aesthetic way as well by talking about the silences, talking about the, uh, and, and, and enacting it, because if you, if you remember, at the end of the video, it did something very powerful, it said nothing. Yeah, I know. It's very deep. And, and it's one of the few videos, I think, that actually had um, aesthetic dimensions in it, even in, in, with its short space of time. So I think this is a very pertinent um, um, contender for the prize. 
Very good. Who would like to support or, or negate those comments? I'm also if very much at me, <laughs> <laughs> giving you the, the mic. I am also very much in support of this project. I think, first of all, because it deals with knowledge as an artistic material in a, in a wonderful way. And uh, that's really my fundamental reason. And uh, beyond that, it deals with, uh, with, uh, with a subject that is truly international and that exactly goes beyond refugees. And I'm very happy actually to hear that one of the next chapters is in Paris because it's not only refugees or migrants in Paris, we are faced with the silencing of their knowledge because of the structural, social construction that uh, exclude them from the from the from the general system or from the possibility to get into the arena to you know, to uh, to uh, to uh, to show or uh, to work and to present what what they what they know and what they what they they learn. So um, and even though it uh, it has a clear uh, uh, authorship with uh, the name of one artist, it is activated in a communal way. And this is really, I mean, this is uh, one of the most beautiful ideas that I've seen actually this year in terms of knowledge sharing, knowledge production, and beautiful aesthetics, <laughs> you know? It has this, uh, yeah, some of us may call it slick, but it also has this very clear sculptural visual presentation that that contemporary art uh, art uses and uh, and uh, I really believe that it's a project that has this capacity to to go beyond its uh, its initial plan so to speak to be uh, in terms of modality versus model, uh, to be uh, applied in different places, and uh, and I actually would uh, would uh, would really like to see how, um, and this is a question maybe to you, Matteo, and to to you, did um, I see that the, the gather all that material uh, in in folders. And I didn't go to the website, but is it, for instance, all these uh, uh, pro uh, all these people pro who participate in the in the project? They are profiled with the, you know, educational background, what they were before being a migrant or before being in a in a refugee situation, and so on. And is this is this all this uh, material accessible, for instance? In order to access this material that exists on the website, you have to register. So you have to go through a registration process. And unless the, the, the data are sensitive, so because some asylum seeker maybe don't want to appear with all their information, but unless they have, their situation is sensitive, yes, the material, the, the information is all there, and also the, the lecture that have been given, if they're filmed, are, are available, and the texts that are made available are also made av mm. in, during the lectures are also made available on the website. It just takes a quick registration. And exist also the, the card, the ID, and Ahmed, we witnessed a workshop, uh, and uh, he wanted people to have this ID and try to use it in museums, try to use it in institutions by saying, I'm a student or I'm a lecturer at the silent university, really to try to start to distribute this, this uh, logo also to spread it around. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's really brilliant. I love it. Please, Nick, that, um, let's have a comment. Uh, we, can, we can go to the public and then back to the jury. John, I, I just wanted to say one thing. It's the only project that we're looking at today, which is actually in the Museum of Art Util show. And um, we put it in institutional repurpose, this room institutional repurpose, as one of the strategies that we're looking at these projects through. And I think that's another thing to consider with this project as he's he's done it through Tate Modern, as you say, that it's the most sort of representative of institutions and in tends to Constal. And he's really asking institutions also to rethink their own modes of operation. Yeah. And I think that's a really important 
um, aspect of the project as well to think about. That's yeah, and I think I would I would also agree that the I mean I mean when I said that the Tate was is the most representative, it wasn't the cynical comment. I mean the fact that this project has managed to arrive at such an august institution is, is a is a is a mark of uh, of the success of infiltra infiltration essentially because clearly that's not an institution which would necessarily want those those uh, the, the the results that the silent university is, is trying to promote. That's a comment by Pelintan. Uh, a comment by Plentan that uh, the host institution needs to re-examine its own institutional body and has to decide whether it wants to be a part of the social affect as a transforming instituting practice or continue to remain as a neoliberal bureaucratic instrument of culture nowadays. And I think these are images from the Tate, I think, actually. Yes. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that, that's a, a plus point, I think. I don't know. <laughs> okay, two people telling me I have to say something. Uh, I, I, um, I support it, but I'm uh, not, not the best person to support it because I uh, was contacted by him when he started the project. I, I'm inviting him to do something, even a movement. He is in the show of Arte Util, so... He's also in the I collection of the Van Abbe Museum and he's had yes, exhibitions here, so yes. you know, it's, uh, it's and a also small network. It's, it's, a, it's a subject that's very, very dear to me, so... It's a, it's no, a European project. It's a European project, or it's, it's something extendable. It's an international project because he wants to do it in the United States as well. He's doing it in the United States. He but wants it's, to it's do it from in French. Our our project uh, will will be sustained by for a French project, no? Yes, yes. French yes. and Berlin, no? Yeah, uh, yes. It was done already. But mostly but, France, yeah. But not not. Uh, Asia, no, or but other I think, races, uh, I think or European. That's, yeah, but that's that's huh? what I like about I, that's what I think is. It's, it's a proposition that can be exported. Yes, yes, of course. I think it's a it's a very interesting. I mean, the way he has proposed it is very clever because it's very uh, close project, so it's very easy to implement in other places, not even by him, by somebody else. Mm. And, and, I, and I think he would be places, supportive yeah. of that. I'm absolutely sure that it's yeah. not something with where the. Um, would there be any, any issues about yeah. other people? It's a lot of work, of course, but if people were yeah. prepared to do that. I mean, one thing that I would like to believe is that it's not so much this is a project that has lots of franchises, but rather that this is a project that does, it, does itself what it does for itself very interestingly, very powerfully, very beautifully, and the compulsion that comes from that is that other people then say, why haven't I done it here? And then they do it for themselves. It's not that he does it everywhere else, it's that everywhere else does it for themselves. Very good point. And of course we don't know quite how that will, how that will develop, but the proposition I think is, is, is there. But yeah. he's kind of doing that already because when we invite him to immigrant movement for the residency project, uh, he makes us do a lot of stuff. You know, so he wasn't the person there. Like, yeah. he really wanted to give us the tools, and then we had to do Good. the project. Enough positive comments. Is there anything uh, negative about uh, the silent university? <laughs> no? Jana, do you want to say anything? Or are you, are you being silent because you feel in a minority, or are you being silent? <laughs> 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 um, no, I was just, I, I was just thinking because I, I like the project also very much, but I was just. Um, I was just thinking that um, the, the clear cutness of this project, and we spoke about that, is what is very much celebrated by everybody. That it's and um, messiness is uh, and, and the messiness and the fact that there are issues you you sort of like uh, because I was thinking if you look at the project in Nabulus, that's also about sharing knowledge, it's about using, uh, using uh, knowledge that, that doesn't come to the forefront to, to come together. And so it, it, it's different, but there is some clear cutness in this one that we seem to also like. So, and, and that's what I, I, I in this kind of project, I, I, find, uh, pro, I find something we have to watch out that we, we, we like that for a reason that we might need to revisit at some point. So you think there is some missing friction in the project? I would, I, that's what I would, might say, that I miss something that, that some of the friction, so... Uh, um, not, my, I just as a critical side comment, yeah. because I, I find us all... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I really think it's not a, 
easy project at all. I don't it's say not it's easy, it's, it's clear it's, cut. No, no, it's not, yeah, the it's same. not because it's clear cut, it looked nice and sleek and, you know, he uses the language of contemporary art. He's a contemporary artist. So we should not, it, it sh he should not be judged, punished. punished for that, you know. <laughs> So, and these are the formats that we all work with in a way or in another. And I think that the knowledge, I mean, there is knowledge and knowledge, there are various, various forms of knowledge. And, uh, and uh, I don't want to put any hierarchy in that, but I think that the knowledge that he's tapping onto is really a knowledge that is absolute, most of the time not even known by others than the people who hold it, you know? So I've, I wouldn't put it in the same comparison in the terms of knowledge production as uh, the, the Naplus project, for instance, because he is talking, he is talking here about a migrant, a refugee, who may have a doctoral degree in science or in whatever, but who finds himself in Amsterdam or in Paris because of many reasons, and he will be cleaning the streets, you know? Yeah. So I think it's really, it's, there is a difference in that, and I, think, and I think that this is something that exactly at that Nikos said, it has been talked about, but it has never been enacted exactly. in that way, and specific, uh, specifically in the context of contemporary art, even in the educational turn, where so much of archive and knowledge and so and so on has been produced, so I, I really think it's a it's a it's it's a brilliant project. It's really very good. I, I just want to make the point that I understand your point about messiness and the value that we want to give to that in terms of its fertility. But sometimes a fertile idea is not evident because of its connectedness to lots of other possibilities, but it's actually, the fertility comes from one simple note. A single note. And here the simplicity of this project, which also is conveyed in the aesthetic representation, the simplicity of the idea is so resonant and it's so cutting, right, that I think we underestimate its complexity by focusing on its simplicity. Clear, very clear, Paolo. I'm only got a, a concern. So, hang, hang. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Paolo. Uh, Sorry, uh, just a quick concern. Maybe, although it might seem a bit paradoxical, but since uh, our decision, your decisions will uh, award 25,000 euro to to the winning project. Uh, can we consider the possibility that the project is simply too good to give the money? And maybe we should actually focus on others who, for, we, for whom the money would really make a difference. I, th I mean, I think, I think we can consider that in the last three. Let me say that. I think for, the first, for our job, I think we should vote for the, the three that we believe the most. I think that when we have the discussion before, when we talk about the last three and advocating for them, I think that could be a legitimate co consideration, but not at this stage. I think it would be too complicated to consider it at this stage. But that's okay. Uh, Jeanne still wants to have no, a, a bite back. Let's, let's, no, that, that's for the sake of the argumentation also, because I really like this project a lot, and I, I think it's an amazing project, and it's, it's, it's among the best. So, uh, let's, But also, I mean, I really want to stress, and not only the messiness for the sake of messiness, but also there are some other things at work here. For instance, uh, as it's not champion sh championing, for instance, lay knowledge. So it's not, champion, uh, no, it's not uh, for instance, a friction, for instance, that a cleaner in Bangladesh who is, a, for instance, a, a cleaner here. Uh, uh, so it is also a particular kind of knowledge. It's a particular kind of uh, thing that is, that is, uh, that is present, presented here or represented here. And so I just want to say that there is a way of looking at this, at its clear cutness, which uh, I think we have to keep uh, an eye of. I don't know if it's not there. No, you, you, yes, but you've just said it's not lay knowledge that's being presented, as if, as if it's only professional knowledge that's being put forward. I'm not sure that that's the case. Yeah. I think the beauty of this project isn't it saying that, it's not saying that... It's academic um, knowledge. That, no, I don't think it's yeah, only it's confined to that. 
people so, with degrees. Yes, yes, I understand that it's people with degrees who don't get recognised in their own country. But once you propose this idea of a silent university, it's not simply confined to credentialising people who are previously credentialised. It's actually, I think, more importantly, coming back to Koyo's point, it's the saying that the that knowledge itself, in the fullness of the word knowledge, is something that can be exchanged in a more richer and more open, more democratic and more aesthetic form, rather than in a purely professionalized, credentialized manner. And if we and what I would like to see this project doing in other situations is to sort of radicalize the notion of knowledge in our everyday life. But what I think is really good in this project, because I like it also, um, is actually that it puts to the foreground the knowledge that is being uh, um, uh, gathered in other countries. Exactly. So, and, and previously we were talking about why, um, I'm, ge I'm generalizing now, why only poor, poor people <laughs> were, were sort of put to the foreground. And I think in this case, it's, it's, it's actually emphasizing on these double positions. Uh, because people who arrive in countries like the Netherlands uh, without any, any position here, but with a lot of background, um, uh, are actually fore foregrounded through, through this project. And I think that's really good. But what I think is really important, and that's, uh, that's going beyond this project even, is the, is the responsibility of institutions art institutions uh, which go from exhibition to exhibition so if 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 um, this project may win i think it's really important that attached to the comment on the price that it's also something like um, how do you say it a political um, claim i would say to um, art art institutions that um, uh, to to make these projects let's say go beyond the project so yeah, it's sort of it's sort of ins institutionalizing hope in a certain sense so how do you go with that you know how how do you go with that, that if you if if uh, the silent university uh, gives people through this activity a position in a certain society how do you how do you sort of make that hold somehow yeah, yeah, and For again, it's about the sustainability. Yeah, is, is yeah like Tate, you know, I, I think they already go beyond their capability, but I understood that they are uh, able to sort of support this project for a year, which is already long beyond the normal duration of an exhibition, and that's, that's not without problems, no? So then this, such a project has to move to a next source of money through an artistic institution. And of course, it's also the responsibility of society to deal with all this stuff that we generate ourselves somehow, no? But I think there's something that really needs to be uh, shout out loud, I think, made this project win. But, uh, but I think also the, the fact, and this also relates to, to, to Tanya, and I think Jeanne in some practices, is, is the demand that the artist makes on the institution is often the way the institution can move. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. so actually these, yeah. these demands that Ahmed places allows the Tate may be to, 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 to develop take, in a way yeah. it would otherwise not be able to yeah. or be, un, be too, yeah. too, uh, uh, to, to have to feel it too, too much inertia to do so. I agree, but I think also that we should creating hope take seriously. Yeah. yeah. I would like to move on unless there's an urgent comment because I think we have a fair smattering of comments um, and it's good also that we had some backwards and forwards that it wasn't only, only celebration. Um, the next project I think might create a slightly different uh, conversation, um, but you never know. Um, it's the project uh, called Christ the King of Bling by the Propeller Group from... Why are you running uh, away? <laughs> um, so uh, I'm sure somebody's going to ask me why we shortlisted this one. Um, what the Propeller Group thus compels us to contemplate is the nature of power as it is recorded and disseminated by media, advertising, social media, crowdsourcing, sourcing documentary, and the internet. By operating as key mentors inside San Art Laboratory, the Propeller Group also educate a growing sector of cultural producers and supporters in professionalizing and improving creative standards and knowledge in communist Vietnam. Um, so this project is, as you know, uh, 25,000, which I don't know, would that be enough money to produce the Jesus piece? Um, but uh, let, let's say it will produce some 
considerable element of it. Yeah? Um, so the Jesus piece would be produced and then hung on the neck of uh, the Christ the King in, in the central Poland. Um, I, I don't think one question that came up would just to clarify, as far as we know, the sculptor, uh, uh, neither the sculptor nor the priest who uh, established this have been consulted in the, this proposal. Um, and I think you tried to ascertain whether that was true uh, or not, and there's been no, uh, there's no proof of any no. contact. No, but the, the money was going to production of a film again. So it's not really because they would propose to make this uh, this color for the Christ, but the the real aim is to get to meet the Reverend and Tito Caicedo in order to put together these two communities, one of the fervent Christians and one of the uh, American rapper, with these two representatives, let's say, and try to understand why this obsession for the Jesus figure from two different, completely different perspectives today in 2013 and try to get together, to get okay. them together. Uh, who, who would like to speak uh, positively about this project? And um, to, no, 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 I mean, the, would the, what would be the, what would be the, um, the possibilities that this project would have to win the prize? Fun? Um, the, the question what? for those at home is, is, is I, I kind of suspected that this question might come up. Um, I'm, getting, I'm getting tired as well. I'm getting a bit comedy. Um, uh, I think we I think we proposed it for some of the same reasons that we proposed Bopana as well. In that it felt that these two were projects that effectively addressed the media, and that if they were delivered, then they would be able to uh, if, to to create a kind of um, a provocative intervention or an effective intervention which would um, have a wide-ranging potential public. So these were things where the action it felt was the consequences of the action were more important and more effective than the action itself. And particularly this one it felt that this could be quite a, uh, a significant media event and therefore felt to be to be worthwhile also in the mix of projects to have something which is which is you know let's be honest quite different in its effect Matteo, maybe you'd like but to answer that question I, as well let me ask you. here but the consequences for whom the media attention for whom for the for the world for for whom um i i, I suppose for the sculpture and and the uh, <laughs> <laughs> Matteo, help here come on <laughs> <laughs> And I have this infamous job to, to be the, the lawyers for the artists, but which we totally embrace. And uh, in this case, I think the point was that the, 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 the track record of uh, propeller group activity uh, in working eff effectively by really reaching huge audiences on YouTube, reaching huge audiences in, in, all, the, in all the media scape that they are part of, because growing up in Vietnam, also what comes across of, about their work is really uh, being uh, gr growing up in an um, Americanized culture, basically, where uh, everything, every, every artistic expression passes through the entertainment business in Vietnam. So for them, it, it, they took this as a signature way of, of working, and also for them, what the real space in which they operate is really the mediascape. So how can they uh, affect, let's say, a, a collective imagery by reworking the terms through which we understand the certain uh, uh, certain paradigms we, we belong to. And in this case, they want to affect paradigms that don't, they don't necessarily belong to directly because they do not part of a, uh, they're not fervent Christian, but they're not part of a, you know pilgrimage that go to the statue of the statue of Jesus, and neither they are. Uh, rapper themselves, but they wanted to, by, by this figure that connects these two communities, try to address uh, the, the importance of uh, such a symbolic uh, uh, value that they still give to, to such a, the, the Jesus figure today from two different, uh, totally different perspectives. And doing this within the mediascape, so by producing a video that would be viral through, through the social media. Maybe there's somebody that'd like to com comment slightly negatively about this proposal. <laughs> in, in, order, in order not to build up too much of a positive momentum at this point. <laughs> I'm, neither, I'm neither into the Christian nor the bling thing. <laughs> and I don't get the conjunction. I don't see what's productive about bringing them together. It's just, 
And I think that the moment the two partners see each other, they'll run away from each other anyway. And I That's don't the see Christians and the bling. I don't see the social justice aspect in it. Nothing. I mean, who does, who does it address? I mean, I don't know. I think it would be dangerous. And the designer could fund the, the piece himself. <laughs> I'm not in favor of this work, but I could see that, um, of course, the, the priest, I guess, because this work was in Berlin, right? In the, the sculpture was in, in the, the sculpture was there. This priest is very, very right wing, right? Yeah, yeah. So in a way, it's, it's a sort of provocation and trying to, to, to create a clash between a very, very conservative right wing uh, person with other believers who, who celebrate Jesus in a different way. I mean, that's the best one can make of it. Uh, <laughs> I, I just think in terms of the criteria that you sort of established, it just fails so dismally on all of them. Um, in terms of uh, sustainability, uh, notions of translatability, friendship, I mean, it's just so ill-conceived. Who is this for? What's the relationship between these two things? Yeah, I, I find it, yeah, I called it cynical, but it's not even cynical, it's, it's yeah. I think we'd move on to the next project. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next question is, it, sorry, Michelangelo. I think that there is, uh, there is uh, the, the, the situation of the confrontation, the confrontation is between the, the necessity of uh, using the, the, uh, the international media uh, as a tool, and the other side, the necessity of people of, uh, um, uh, I don't say, uh, spirituality. Hmm? There is these two points, huh? spirituality and, and media. Hmm? Uh, I think that the idea of Christ is a provocation, but if you don't make something different, on that field, the provocation become a law. Christ become an again and again, again the, the power of the of the vertical power that is has nothing to see uh, with democracy. Thank you. No, I what, what, what I think what 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 I think is necessary is to bring some some uh, some subject some new subject, and uh, taking this provocation as the necessity to use these two, 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 two terms, uh, spirituality and, and, and uh, activity of communication. But we, we need to bring new, new symbols, different symbols than this one. No, thanks, it's clear, I think. Um, I'd like to go on to the next project, which is already up there, that's very good. Um, this is a project by Ruang Rupa, which is a group um, who've been um, around for quite a long time. It started in 2000 in Jakarta, still going very strong there with a very uh, substantial network which involves uh, video festivals, uh, production of uh, music and art and uh, uh, exhibition space and uh, um, social activism. Uh, so this is a particular project within a much wider um, uh, compass uh, of series of projects which you extend not only around Jakarta but around the whole of Indonesia and this is also a national project which proposes uh, the touring of alternative media. I think that's very important to stress. It's a, it's a cinema which would um, you show uh, 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 films and video works uh, that is simply not available in the Indonesian uh, media, uh, television and, and broadcast media in any way. Um, so these would be uh, then made available in the various villages using this technique of the outdoor cinema, which is something which is known and, and familiar to the communities there. I'll just read out the quote from Zoe Butt. Um, what I loved about Ruang Rupa is how history feels like it is at your fingertips, like it's in production and it feels alive. It's a space that illustrates the interconnectedness of the 20th and 21st century. It's a space where history is socially activated. Such access to the rhizome of history is so incredibly rare in Southeast Asia, and I think again the, the sort of reputation of Ruang Rupa is part of also the shortlisting and part of the consideration of this project. Um, I'd like some comments on on this positive and negative. I think um, 
would be good to hear those people that are interested in it or not. Uh, Tanya, do you want to start? No, no, I oh, Nikos, please. Oh, okay. Um, I, this is another one that I really liked a great deal. It has a number of dimensions which I, th I think are very um, productive and very clever and very um, just very exciting. First of all, it takes something that's very familiar, which is the outdoor cinema experience. And, um, and that's an experience that is full of conviviality and fantasy at the same time. People, you know, stare up at the screen, stare at the stars. It's a, both a cosmic and a very secular moment in time. And, and, and it also has another dimension, which is that let's try to take that experience and situate it in, in different neighborhoods where um, it, it utilizes the form and the event to create a kind of con a new kind of conviviality in the neighborhood, in the community. And, and I also particularly like the way in which these, this phenomenon is then being rearticulated into creating a new network for distributing um, art videos, but not just screening them, but also creating a device that is utilized for that purpose. And I thought the drawings of that device in the video were really, really clever and beautiful. And it, and it had a very sort of technical dimension to it, which I thought was very um, intelligent and incisive. And then it had that social element, which I thought was very strong in terms of community building. And, and, and it's revitalizing a tradition that's um, very deep in many people's imaginations and experiences but revitalizing it in a different kind of way with new technologies and different content. And so it's sort of creating a new hybrid, I think. And in that sense, it has both translatability, it has portability, it's, it has um, sustainability, and, and I think it has potentially exciting impact in terms of um, how it would contribute to other people's everyday experiences. Yeah, I think, I think also it's interesting they talk about the network between the various yeah. communities. So also to start to allow that, that sort of flowing of information between Sumatra, Kalimantan, Java. Again, communi communi communication which doesn't often flow at that uh, level of community, community across this huge, huge country. Um, uh, so again, that, that, that felt quite, uh, quite challenging and quite interesting as a, as a proposition. What other comments are there of any, uh, um, of any nature? I know we're getting tired now, but this is the last one. If we can just focus for five more minutes. Any comments from the public about Ruangrupa? Those of you that know it, or please. Um, I think there's an interesting parallel between this project and the Museum of Public Concerns. The one um, is similar in its mobility, its, its dynamic. Um, also in the sense that both Brazil and Indonesia are seeing or facing a big increase in middle class um, po population um, and both of them and I think the, the main difference between between the two projects is that this last one is a bit more precise in what it will actually do and it's a bit more focused um, but I think both of them have the same quality um, I think also very interesting to remark is that both of them um, if I remember correctly, the list of, in the, of locales in Indonesia they would approach or, or inve invest in, need, neither Jakarta or Jogjakarta were in the list, so they really, really go to places that are in much need, or I can assume that, that those are the places where they should be, um, which also was not very clear in the, in the Brazilian case, necessarily. But, but then it's, it's interesting to see that how it's maybe more of a lack of information on the Brazilian project, which was received more lukewarmly in, 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 in the audience and, and the jury. Um, whereas maybe, yeah, I find it difficult to dismiss one for the other because potentially both of them are, are equally good. I, mean, one, I think it was a very interesting comment and I think valid to make the comparison. One, one aspect of the comparison is the relation to the archive. The archive is foregrounded in the, um, in the, in the case of the Brazilian, whereas here the archive is a kind of given which you don't necessarily feel is particularly historical, uh, uh, which is the, the archive of alternative and uh, art video. 
material, maybe it's easier for us to imagine the Roaring River archive than it is the Minas Gerais, which might have some connection, I think you're right, to favoring it, but also it feels like it's more articulated and the archive is not the, the subject. The archive is also a means to create community and here the archive is much more, the other one is the archive becomes much more the subject matter. I think that maybe is a difference also that creates the, the lukewarm and the slightly hot reactions. <laughs> yeah, my thing um, I, I, yes. I really feel works in this project is to use art for other means other than itself. And I think that's really good because we have talked, especially in the Museum of Art, to the idea of art as a tool and I think this is a good example of, of that. Mm -hmm. But also, I'm more, I mean, I know it's not the project, but maybe if you can talk about more things the group does, because I really like that's the only one has a group name instead of a person, so. Yeah. Uh, I, I if, if we're speaking about other things they do other than this project, I think Charles can say more than I do, because you know them well. Um, yes, and I've worked with them many times in different places. Um, they are, uh, I mean, the. There are also other people in this audience who can talk about Ring Rupert um, very much. Also, yeah, Trude, if she's here, she, she, did she go? Okay, she would be even better than me. Um, but they, uh, they are a group which have been around for a long time. They're almost establishment in, uh, in, in uh, Indonesia, I would say. Um, they uh, are, consist of a loose network of about 20 or 25 people, some of whom are much uh, more active than others. Um, they uh, organize the Jakarta Biennale now, that's until recently. They organize a video festival called OK Video Festival. They have a home of operations which has their own archive and, their, uh, and the archives of the videos which are presented. It has an artistic residency, it has an exhibition space, and it's also a community uh, uh, resource, a community house. People can go and sleep there and, and uh, a sort of drop-in center as well. It has so many sort of multiple purposes and like many of those situations, it feels as though it's infinitely flexible. It feels as though whatever would be needed, they could simply move the tables and chairs around and they'd have the space to be able to do it, uh, which is quite beautiful. Um, I think I, I'm, you know, I'm very supportive of them, so I, it's difficult to be negative or to be, or to be objective. Um, I, but they, they are quite Jakarta-based, but, but, but uh, an offshoot of them is called Forum Lenteng. Forum Lenteng uh, gives cameras out, particularly in Kalimantan and, and in the more peripheral areas of Indonesia so that people can make community videos. They don't claim this is art, they don't claim this is anything but uh, a, a set of archives of ways of life which are not necessarily um, profiled so much in, within a you know, dominant Java, Javanese uh, uh, culture in, in Indonesia. Um, so the, the networks that they have through something like Forum Lenteng make it easy to believe that this distribution of the um, of the the Jerobak will uh, will actually happen. And it's also nice that bioscope is there because that's a Dutch word which is taken over by the Indonesians rather than cinema. Um, but apart from that, I, I think that they they have a, they have a huge capacity to do to do most things that they feel they need to do. They manage a band. They have a uh, um, they manage a, the uh, uh, tour dates and and uh, promotion of of DVDs and CDs and things like that. There's all sorts of levels to them um, because they're such a big group. If anything, they're too establishment. <laughs> I think we are, oh yeah, Paolo, is there a comment? Oh, no, thanks, sorry. sorry. Please. Actually, I'm from Indonesia, and I was part of that group for several years, and the thing that I really like is they open for 24 hours every day, so everyone can come, and anytime you can talk to someone there and just discuss everything, and they also have like open library. It's quite small, but you can go there and just uh, read the book there. You cannot take it away, but you can go there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. It's nice to have you. Um, we are actually done now with all the lists, unless there are any comments. I think we've talked quite a lot the last three hours. Um, what I propose... I'm, I'm, I'm also interested in the Twitter feed. We don't see. Uh, is, is there any Twitter? <laughs> any questions from people in the internet? That was old one, no? What I, what I propose is that we um, kind of take a break for 10 minutes. I don't think it'll take much longer than that. We are going to vote. Uh, very simply, we're going to, I'm going to ask everybody to list their top three. 
Um, and uh, I'm going to give you pieces of paper from this notebook, and you will write down the top three. Um, uh, write them in any kind of description, and if I don't... Oh, we have voting cards. If I don't understand it, then, uh, then I'll ask you. Um, put your initials on it, but we won't reveal who's, uh, who's, uh, who has voted. Um, and, uh, and then if you give them to me, fold them over and give them to me, and then I will uh, monitor the votes. And in about 10, 15 minutes, I'll, we'll be back with the top three, and we'll go and look at those three more in relation to each other as well uh, and listen to uh, comments from you and then we'll hand it over where we're all voting together. Okay, thank you. Yes. So you can have a coffee if you haven't had it yet and yes, we just come up with the top three and Daniel will distribute this to all of you so that you can vote.